What's going on, guys? Today's podcast is brought to you by Manscaped. And if you go to manscaped.com forward slash RBP, you can get 20% off and free shipping on their new beard kit that I'm going to show you. Check this out. So you get all this cool stuff in the beard kit. And I'm going to show you each piece one by one. First of all, the most important part is you get the beard trimmer itself. Now, the cool thing is you don't get a ton of these attachments like with every other beard trimmer. You lose half of them. This one, you can set the beard trimmer length with this dial. So you just have the one guard to worry about, which is beautiful because I always lose these. So that's the first thing. Second thing is you get the beard conditioner. You get beard balm. You get a beard brush. Wonderful. Um, and you get, let's see, beard oil. And the last thing is the beard shampoo. So you get all this. I'm going to show you on the website. If you go to the website, manscaped.com forward slash RBP, you can get go to new, new beard kit. Click on that. It'll show you exactly what you get. You get the scissors. You get the brush. You get all this stuff in the beard kit for $139, but you save 20% plus you get free shipping. So make sure you go to manscaped.com forward slash RBP or use code RBP at checkout to get the discount plus the free shipping. Guys, you won't regret it. This beard trimmer with the dial on here so you don't have all the attachments is absolutely wonderful. Who's that? That's such a beautiful dog, dude. Is it a girl or boy? It's a girl. Coco, who's that? There's a big girl, man. She's thick. What's her what's her name? Knock it over. Coco, get over there. Mikey, Mike, are you gonna have kids? No. Just dogs? Yeah. (laughs) That was a that was the fastest answer anyone's ever given to are you gonna have kids? Let's take her out, actually. Sorry. Sorry, man. Go on. You have a panic attack. Go on out. Is that a whiskey and coke you're drinking? <laughs> like trailer park boys. <laughs> <laughs> a dude followed me on Instagram. I was so pumped when this when he followed me. I wrote him right away. The trailer park boys guy. Yeah, Ricky or whatever. I, the guy I never, the... I never watched that show. Let me just pull it up real quick for those people who don't know what you're talking about. Is that a Canadian show? Yeah. I so Amer- his name's Jacob Tremblay. I think it's his name. So, Amer- so Amer- Amer- on Amer- that one. Americans have no idea what we're talking about. <laughs> no, they have trailer park boys. And- Do they? It's been on like streaming services. Yeah. Is- so which guy? This Julian. Guy? Julian, yeah, with the black hair holding the rum and coke. Oh, this guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's you today. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Let's, yeah. Let's, let's go back. Why? Why? Uh, that was a super fast answer, dude. No desire. Well, I, to be honest, it's probably too late for that. I'm just, it's never too late, I guess, but I'm 40 fucking two and I have the patience of a fucking... <laughs> <laughs> it's probably not happening. <laughs> how how old's the, how old's your wife? Or girlfriend, sorry. Uh, that's a good question. <laughs> you don't know? Edit that out. Edit that out. Well, she's 28, I think. Oh, okay. Honestly. Yeah. 28, uh, 29. She's going to hate me for not knowing that. Anyway. She'll get over it. Just edit in the right the right answer. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see where these guys are. Yeah, that was was that ever a thing? What kids? Yeah. No, I mean I don't. I'm not like. If it had happened, I wouldn't have been like I'm. Thank, thank God. Sorry to anyone listening who might be an ex of mine. Thank God it wasn't with you and you, but. <laughs> With my current girlfriend, I mean, if it happened with us, it happened. But it's not like we, neither of us is too keen on the idea, to be very honest. How long have you been with your current girlfriend? That's another fucking sh- trouble. Come on. Question you're going to get into me. Come on, you since don't 2000, know. Since 2000 and, still correct me, I think we've been together four years now. Oh, good. That's good. Yeah. Long term. Yeah, I'm trying to think of when because like my, my life when I was bodyguarding is like, I tell people all the time, it's just like a blur to me. Yeah, like time just like went, and I don't, yeah. I can't, rem- I can remember like instances. Yeah, but I just yeah. don't remember like specifics. So I'm like, fuck, man, my memory's shot. Like, <laughs> what do you, what do you think that is? Because I feel that way about my bodybuilding career. I don't know. Like, it's just because you're probably in the, you're in the middle of it, right? So it's not like you're stopping to, yeah, take account of where you are and what you're doing, and 
it's always like bodybuilders and I guess sport people who do sports in general. It's always like you've accomplished something and now it's like, I'm going to the next, I'm on the next. Yeah. So you don't take that time to really stop and, and think about what you're doing. Like I'm sure when you competed, cause you competed at such a high level, same with Ian, you guys, like you can remember bits and pieces yeah. of like big events, but it was just like, now I'm, I won this or I did this. Now I'm going to that. So it's like, yeah, that memory has gone and we're on to the next one. Right. Ian, what's up? How are you? What's up? Your so eyes I... are your eyes are shot. Are you fucked up? <laughs> <laughs> are, you, are you trying trying to get me to get fucked up, or yes. do you actually think I am? Yes, yes. I, I'm gonna go I'm get not my, yet. I'm not yet. <laughs> I'm gonna go get my weed. I'm gonna go get my weed pen. Okay, go for <laughs> it. Out, and then we'll, we'll we'll all get fucked up. No, not yet. Guy, how are you? I'll go get my Mike Van Wick hoodie. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so will I? Oh, I forgot I was gonna fucking wear my. Can, can I make a comment that I the last one of the last podcasts I was on here, I had a nice gray and black flannel on. Since then, <laughs> I have been in a black and gray flannel every fucking goddamn podcast he's in. Can I tell you something? Listen, ben I'm a, I'm a great it. fucking. I'm a great Ben. Guy. Ben has been asking me for these since we started the company, and I just never got around to yeah. it. Now we finally get them, and I start wearing them. I'm like, these are really fucking well, comfortable. They're great. They're like a jacket, a long yeah. sleeve, Shack- hoodie. There's a shacket. There's a shacket. Yeah. It's a shacket. Shacket. <laughs> the best. You, did you hear that, eh, guy? Paul calls jacket. him. A, Paul calls him a shacket. A shacket. He's shot it because it's a it's a jacket and so a shirt, jacket. shirt together. Yeah. He's an idiot. <laughs> no, he's right. <laughs> I real if you Google it, it says shacket. <laughs> I'm telling that's you, like, but it doesn't say it on the website. No, because he said he, he said he said he said that it was on the Lululemon website, and it wasn't. We called oh, because most. fucking Lulu calls it a shacket. That's what we're gonna talk about. <laughs> you guys didn't have anything you called a shack. Wait, right? wait, 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 what were you googling prior yeah, to that? Actually, no. <laughs> what, can you go back? What are you talking can about? Can you go back? No. Wait, can you go back? Can you go back? <laughs> Can you just hit the back button real quick? Just hit the back button. What did I miss? I looked away. Can you just hit? It's at least such a shady fuck. Okay. Shady I hit the fuck. I hit the back button. This we're looking at this. This is the trailer park boys. Oh, that's all. <laughs> Good joke. Why did you get super nervous then? Because I wasn't sure what you found. <laughs> Jacket outfit ideas. What were you googling after that? Nothing. Okay. Shacket meaning. Here you go, guy. Shacket is a crossover between a shirt and a jacket. Got it? Yeah, I mean, I guess it would come down to like what how thick is the material of that shirt? Is that like shacket material or is that more like a shirt? No, Stop. this is this is more like a regular flannel. There's not yeah. I have a I have a motorcycle oh, yeah. one like one of these for my motorcycle that's like thicker. It's a jacket, like shirt. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think it's basically like a carhartt jacket, but no one's ever called it a shacket. No, yeah. except, like except Carhartt Paul. style. Paul, yeah. Paul, except Paul. <laughs> um, all right. What were we talking about? We were talking about Mike said, and I'm, I'm glad you guys came on because I'm curious. Mike said before you guys got on that his, because I asked him how long he's been with his girlfriend. And he said he couldn't remember because he said during his security days, it was all a blur. And I thought that was interesting because during my bodybuilding career, when I think back about it, it's like he said, you remember instances but I don't remember it all like very clearly. Mm-hmm. Do you guys, you guy, like, guy, like, especially, like, especially you guy, because you're retired now. Ian's still in the middle of it, so it's different. But since yeah, you're retired, think, when you're retired now, guy, now that you look back at your career, is yeah. it a blur or do you see it all very clearly? No, because it's like you know what it is. It's I think because the way our careers happen, they almost happen in chunks. Like oh, highs and lows. Huh? What meaning? What? Like I remember my bodybuilding career in sections. Like there was like the beginning, the middle, and the end. Yeah, I think yeah, that's I can, kind I can, of. I can relate. Like to that. I remember the beginning being a certain way, and I remember certain things that happened in certain timelines that happened with certain people. Yeah. But if you ask me to tell you everything that happened all together, there's no. I'd miss so much. You know what? That's I'd funny that so you said out. that. I never realized that, but I do the same thing. There's like the beginning. Yeah, I would leave so the much middle, out, and then there's like yeah. my my ending of my career. Yeah, it's like my bodybuilding career started like this, and yeah. then this is when it was at the height, and this is how it ended. But there's so much detail in that those years that I would leave probably 90% of it out because only the 10% are like the important parts. Mike, do you think of your bodybuilding career that way now that it's gone? I didn't or... have much of one, so it was hard to remember. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> like, Ian, are like you, <laughs> Ian, you're in the middle of it. So. Yeah. I think I remember it as like, as like peaks and valleys. Like, I mean, I think that's like anything in life though. You're going to kind of remember the things that are like memorable, whether they're good yeah. or bad. 
you know exactly i know but that like, are less like less at like you know consequential in my career bodybuilding i really don't remember now but i feel like there's something wrong with me because i'll sit down with like roman and roman remembers everything about everything and i'm like how come i don't remember shit like yeah, i can't german. I can't remember anything. Say because he's German. German. He's German. That's that's the answer. Because he's German. <laughs> no, but like it's not just Roman. Like there's other people I've sat with that will say like, "Hey, remember when we did this?" And I'll be like, "No, I don't fucking, I don't remember that. I don't remember yeah. like." Yeah, your memory isn't that great, actually. Like Jose last time said that he, him and his brother gave you a ride in Vegas. I don't remember yeah. that at all. Yeah, stuff like that. I wouldn't remember that either. Like, I feel like I would have remembered meeting Jose. Like, I don't think I would block that out. Maybe was, so you maybe think a was... lot of people that you think a lot of people remember the things like I think a lot of people remember things about me that I don't remember because it was more important to them at the time because they were involved but they weren't the athlete if that makes sense. A point of view point of view is relevant. almost like the fans perspective of it. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I'm talking yeah. about other bodybuilders. Like I've talked to other bodybuilders that like remember stuff about their careers. Like I like they'll say like this or that happened or this happened backstage and it doesn't seem like Seems like insignificant stuff that I should remember, but it's just all fucking. You know when you, you get, get really, you know when you get, you know when you get really fucking drunk and you think about the night before, and you can think of like four awesome points in the night, and the rest of it's kind of a blackout. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's how I look at my bodybuilding career. I mean, that's pretty sick. <laughs> <laughs> you can remember all of it, and that would be horrible. I remember all the good shit. And the rest of it is just <laughs> no, no. I didn't say. That. I remember no, because I remember. The bad shit too, but it's just yeah. see, that's only, how it like, is. Yeah. see, mine is like I have like kind of like pinpoint like destinations on the map of my mind of like highs yeah. and lows. Like, you yeah. know, that's oh, wait, how, how did this you this started with relationships yeah. and somehow we parlayed it well, body because people. I asked I asked uh I asked Mike what how long he's been with his girlfriend. <laughs> and he said four years and he couldn't he was kind of like lost on the timeline, but he said it was because his security, his time and security was kind of a blur. Yeah. Was, was that like, because there was so much partying and fucking drugs? <laughs> no, well, for maybe the other people, not for me though. I was watching the party and, and the drugs. <laughs> it but it's just, just like being on, like being on the road and like traveling all over. It's like you lose. You don't even know like what day is what. Like weekends aren't weekends. Every day. Mike would come into the city, and I'd meet him in the city, and yeah. he, he would walk me into Drake concerts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but wait a minute. Before we'll get back into that, but for a minute, that actually made sense, guy. Well, because he said every day is kind of the same. You're just going from one destination to the next. And that's exactly what we do, though. Yeah. Like, I don't know. Yeah. There's no difference between a Saturday and a fucking Wednesday for a bodybuilder. No, it's besides, just, the only thing that changes for us is what body part we train. That's no, right. And, the, and yeah. like I said, like, it, you know, when you have a long enough career, then the things that aren't like really milestone moments kind of get lost in the mix. Like, yeah. I remember my pro debut well, but the second pro show I did in that first season, I barely remember that Toronto Pro at all when I think to it. Like, I don't remember really any of it. I remember what place I came, but I don't remember like, anything about the week staying there or like what i did or where i trained or who i saw like I, I have no fucking idea you know do you think it's like that for regular people that have monday to friday type jobs or do you think that it's more clearly, i think that, clearly defined because they have a weekend well it depends like if something happened at their day-to-day -day monotonous job they might forget it but if something happens on the weekend when they're like having fun it might yeah. stand out more you know yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, because when I think of a body, like, because Mike just brought that to light now, I'm like, okay, that makes sense because the whole 10 years of my bodybuilding career is kind of like just a continuous training session, sleep, eat, repeat for 10 years fucking yeah. straight. Yeah. I mean, so but I mean, that's kind of what it, I think anybody that is in like a profession, like, or spe like, but you can call whether we're calling bodybuilding a sport or not, there's always going to be some sort of repetitiveness in order to be the best yeah, yeah. when right? you think back to your when you think back to your bodybuilding career if you had, what are like the things that stand out the most to you like if you think back and you're like think back to my 10 years of bodybuilding like first three things you can think of what comes to you uh the first three things are probably a couple tears and a couple moments on stage that flashback like so what I which tears and which moments on stage i remember tearing my hamstring very very clearly both times uh, and I remember being on stage at the Arnold the first time uh, for the single, you know, when you come out by yourself for your mandatory routine. Mandatory. I remember that specifically because the crowd went, I remember turning around and the crowd going crazy. And I was like, it was the first time I had felt that feeling. Yeah. So I, I specifically remember that. And then 
you know, if I sat here and thought about it, I'd probably think of a lot more. Yeah, but, but I those, didn't want, don't think about it. Just the first, like, yeah. That's the first, those are, that's the first one that popped in my head. That's the first good memory and bad memory. Those two things <laughs> kind yeah. of came, but I don't. Were they, were, were they close together? No, the Arnold, my first Arnold oh. was 2011. Well, wait a minute. The first time I tore my hamstring was my first time taking Anadrol. I was like, <laughs> I was like, I'm strong as fuck. Too right strong now. for your own fucking <laughs> I was I was twenty fucking years invincible. Twenty years old. I was taking fifty milligrams a day. I was fucking stiff like deadlifting four plates, and I felt it snap. I was two weeks out from my first show. Did you compete? Uh, yeah, I won that show. I won the overall. Um, but and then I tore it, and then I did the Arnold in twenty eleven. I tore my second part of my hamstring in twenty sixteen. So oh, wow, they weren't they weren't close together. How what you how'd you do with that twenty eleven Arnold? I don't even remember that one. Oh, I shit the bed. Because I had come off, I had come off the Flex Pro where I was probably at my best. Yeah, and then I was a little bit softer because the, the pressure from the Arnold's just got to me, man. Those those big shows always fucked with me. Yeah, I never, I never, I never brought my best to the big shows because I just, I don't know if I got scared or what, but I just, my, I didn't look great at that show. So, like, if you look back now at the photos, they're not bad. But I remember that lineup was nuts too. It was like fucking Branch and Dexter and Dennis Wolf and like it's just a fucking. Yeah. I mean, that's like this Olympia for me, like exact yeah. same. Yeah, yeah. It was just this fucking lineup that was like. But would you would you rather that, or would you rather go against like a subpar lineup? I would yeah, rather. Like my first show was like baptism by fire. I went against like a lot of good guys. No, no, not. But I'm not. My first show, I went against a bunch of good guys too. I'm not saying I don't <laughs> want to compete against them. I just, it's like Ian at this year's Olympia. Like, if you yeah. are gonna, if you're gonna, you want them, but it's yeah. You want to be at your best if you're gonna compete against that type of lineup. You don't want to be yeah. like. You don't want to, you never want to show up 90% whether you win or lose. Yeah. Because you're like, well, you leave there and you're like, well, fuck, man. I, because if you win, you're like, I know I could have looked better. And if you lose, you're like, I know I could have looked better. So either way, yeah. you're not, you're not really, it's, it's like, it's a very dulled feeling. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. Who was your, why? Who was in your first show, guy? That was good. David Henry, Jose Raymond. Um, those are just the top. Those are the one yeah. and two. Hall of Fame. You won my pro debut. Yeah. yeah, I did. I I won. I won Ian's pro debut. Yeah. Oh, really? <laughs> I gave me a good old fucking spanking for my pro debut. Wait, <laughs> what, what, what did you think? We didn't like. We kind of didn't really know each other like a little bit, and I think it was like cordial. But I was working. I owned a gym with another guy at the time with Tony and like some other guys, and, and like people were like chirping at Fuad like this young guy was going to come in and beat him, and he was yeah. so fucking pissed that people <laughs> put my name in like the conversation with him. They're like, how fucking dare you, this fucking well, little ant, you know? But you know how yeah. how that feels now, right? 100%. You know how, when you've yeah. been a, when you've been a pro for five, six, seven years. Yeah, and, and then there's some new kid that nobody knows, and they're like, "That guy's gonna win." You're like, "Wait a minute, motherfucker! I've been here. I've been, I've been here." <laughs> hey, I never said I was gonna. Be I know you didn't. I know. You didn't. <laughs> so me, me, and uh, guy, me and uh, Ian's business partner at the time got into like a little bit of a. Inst in, in, it wasn't Instagram. It was one of the message boards, I think, or something. We got, we got into a little, <laughs> you know, verbal war, and I basically told him to fuck off. And yeah, he, I remember he, that. He, he told Doctor. me to fuck off. Whatever it was, whatever it was. And then yeah. we competed. Ian looked fucking incredible, but he was still bit he was starting. So he was still what would you, know, you weigh your first show, Ian? 235, 240. My pro debut, I was probably like sub 230. I was like 227, 230. Yeah. Like, like what were you? I was 20, 23. No, he said Mike, I think, what was yours? He said, Mike, what was yours first show? Oh, oh fuck. The embarrassment of the New York Pro I did was <laughs> on stage at like 270. But Mike, Mike, you not don't a good two seventy. You don't like talking about your bodybuilding career too much, eh? Well, there's not much to talk about, to be very honest. With you. So it's like, <laughs> what are we going to go over? This shit show or that shit show? It's like, you know, you did, I don't you really know. Like two. Yeah, well, the second one I didn't make it to the final, so you can't really count it. I was laying in State Mike's Hospital downtown for the yeah for the finals. Yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah. I just I got food poisoning. I told this like last time. I got food poisoning the. Yeah, night before prejudging, and I just fucking yacked everywhere, and it was just a whole fiasco. Oh. Just went, but, kept but spiraling he, downhill. That's the only way you like, make Fuad look good is getting to fucking throw up the whole show. <laughs> he said that last time. That's what I, I said told, to him. I called, I called my buddy, my coach Darren. I'm like, bro, you got to come up here. I'm fucking shredded. I'm like, I, I look amazing. <laughs> I told, I told Mike, same thing happened to me. I was fucking peeled from throwing up. That was but, flex pro, right? That was no. That was the uh, 2010. No, no. That was the. 20th. How did you carb? How did you, so you didn't was, eat anything after throwing up? 
I couldn't keep talking, anything down. Are you talking about like Mike? I, yeah, I literally couldn't. Mike's kept going down. He kept throwing up. Mine stopped. Oh. Mike kept fucking throwing up the whole way. Yeah, you just that. you just use yours as like a quarter tab of diazide, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was twenty. That's all the throw was like just get enough out, but like not too much. You know? It was 20, 2014, 2014 Dallas Europa. You're Euro, Dallas. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. No, Dennis James. Dennis James. Dennis coached, won it. Yeah. Coach yeah. me. No, no. Dennis coached me for that. Oh, that was Branch. What's Branch the show that? you did with Dennis and Brand, uh, Dennis it was, and it was Ben? One show that was, Pardon? Dennis and Ben was 2009. Oh, 2009. Okay. That's the one. Your pro pro debut was Dallas? Me? Yeah. No, my pro debut was uh, Montreal. Well, wait, wait, wait. The the actual on paper, it was the week after I got my pro card, I did Atlantic City. Yeah. And I took 15th. But I was still (laughs) like, it was still, I didn't even want to do it. Chad was just like, go see what it's like. So, like, my real pro debut was the next year I did the Montreal Pro in 2007. That was the first time I got, a, like, actually, like, got ready for a, a pro Where event. Show? Yeah, that was, um, I think I beat King Kamali at that show, so that was a big deal. And then Chris Cormier took fourth. Quincy Taylor was third. I think Darum Charles, was it Darum Charles or Troy Alves? I can't remember. And then I think Johnny Jackson won that show. I was at that show. You won, it was in Dallas? No, I said Montreal. No, no, but did you? No. What Where I, was that? Did, was, San was there Antonio? In, no, was there a show in Dallas that you won? No, I took second to second, I, I, second to Branch. Okay. Okay. Yeah. No, I didn't win that show. Anyway, um, what's going on, Ian? Where are you? You're in uh, oh, snowboarding. You're snowboarding. How is it? Having yeah. fun? I don't, look at my. It's fucking cold. You can see my face is like so like windburnt. You know. Yeah, fucking pull the shit out. Uh, but it's good, really good. We like went for quite a while today. Mike, would you ever snowboard at, at your peak size? No, <laughs> well, I, I, hadn't, actually, I hadn't for ten years. Yeah, yeah, it sounds terrifying. Actually, well, since I have a fake hip, it's even more terrifying. Yeah. <laughs> like, Mike, did I did see- have excitement on the weekend though. I fucking I fell getting out of my truck, so that was pretty athletic and exciting. <laughs> what do you mean you, you hit some ice? No, I just got out of my truck and fucking ate shit. Right to the ground, like why? Right in front of, right in front of the gym, because I just got out and I, like my running board. I have the AT four X, yeah. So the running board's like high; it doesn't drop down, obviously. So I just I, get on there and I kind of stick one foot down, yeah. and then kind of pop out. That foot went fucking, and I like down. I li- I literally <laughs> oh. I literally did this in Chris's Ram like two days ago. Really? Yeah, fucking. He's got those like high like running boards, not the ones that come down. Yeah, yeah. it was like icy, and I like stepped on it, and it was kind of like a little bit of like frozen shit on it, so I couldn't get like a good. So I like stepped on, then went to step in the truck, and that foot slid out, and I was just like, oh, fuck, and I grabbed the oh. steering wheel. I almost killed myself. <laughs> I went down hard. I was, I fell on my left hip, and I just had the right one like uh, redone. So I'm like, thank God I landed on the left. <laughs> Are you okay? Are you okay? Or are you fucking? Anything oh, I'm fine. Yeah, just the noise I made was the most bitch noise of all time when I fell. <laughs> If you'd have found the like, other hip, it would have been clank. Yeah. <laughs> what was the what I was the noise? Just, I would have bounced up back up. What was the noise? I, I just made the sound. I was just, I was just like, and like I just fucking <laughs> thumped. Like I like I was more like as I popped up and I was looking around, I'm like, did anyone hear me make that noise? Because I'd rather <laughs> that no one that people saw me fall and not hear that noise. Because like, like gathering myself, like leaning against the truck. I'm like, is anything broken? Like, do I feel is everything all right? <laughs> Falling at this age. Versus falling when you're younger, like oh, you're it's younger, fucking you terrifying. Down, like, it's steps. not even. It's not even the age. And you're fine. It's, it's the size. Because you know it's what? I've way, I've man. I've known like two or three people in my life that have torn a quad just from slipping and trying yeah. to ca- and trying to catch themselves. And then when they talk to the doctor, the doctor's like, "Well, there's so much force because your quad's so big yeah. that it yeah. tore, it tore your quad because you're trying to catch yourself and you're cold." You know what I mean? Right. So that would have been my biggest fear with Ian and Mike in the, both those instances. Your leg goes out. You try and catch yourself. Yeah. Fuck, man. That's scary. Yeah. I wasn't athletic to catch myself. I just fell. So I just <laughs> thudded the ground. <laughs> there was no just, bracing for that one. Yeah, I just fucking smashed my shin on the truck and then sat there and said, <laughs> mother fuck, you know, like when it fucking hurts, like me bang the shin. Yeah. But <laughs> shin bangers are the worst. Mike, yeah. uh, what are you eating, guy? Sorry, not Mike. I use rice and steak. Let me see. Let me see. Why are you Come still on. eating? Why are you still eating clean? I like it. Mike, do you still eat like, clean? Uh, other than the rum and like, coke, other than the rum, yeah, and coke. other than the Jack and Coke I got going yeah. here. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean I I try to, but like 
I always fuck up, so I end up eating what I want. So I mean, I'm not. How how often? I want to know if I have a partner in in cheap food. <laughs> You don't. Oh, I'm on, trust me, I'm on, I'm on here. I'm on here with these fucking guys. They're always like, "Tell me how bad yours is, and I'll tell you how much worse mine is." After no. that, <laughs> well, that uh, bad? For it goes in. It goes in waves. There'll be there'll be one. Let's week just say where, I have a really bad problem with Tim Hortons. Like a really bad problem with Tim Don't, Hortons. Donuts, like not coffee, but yeah. donuts. No donuts. Yeah. Daily, like Tim Tim bits. Fucking, you can't get. I this can't get enough. Fuck. This is guy. Can I tell you? This is fucking awesome. I've been doing this podcast. A Timbit? A Timbit? Yeah. It's, it's like, like a munchkin at Dunkin' Donuts. Yeah. Oh. You, got a, you got a fucking kindred spirit here, eh? Listen, guy. <laughs> yeah. Fuck you, Ian. Fuck. This is- You've been waiting for this. You've been waiting for this. Yeah. <laughs> Two fucking years I've been doing this podcast. He it's just every- keeps bringing enough retired guys on. Like, oh, I'll bring fucking Guy <laughs> on here. I'll bring Jose. I'll bring Paul. One of these guys will know. Somebody <laughs> is going to do <laughs> what I do. <laughs> what do you do? Pretty much what you do. I fucking... I'll put it this way. Like three weeks ago, I had like, I ordered pizza like three times that week. Like I yeah, just. Standard. <laughs> standard. See? <laughs> See, Ian? He's fucking he's, worried. He's been trying to get under 260 no, for like I've, half I've, a decade. <laughs> a decade? <laughs> I try and like. Since, I'll since try the and live be, podcast. Yeah. I'll try and be conscious of like the pizza intake, but I'm just like a burger and like a burger dude all the way. I'll eat burgers all day. It's fucked up. Because it's because it's because in bodybuilding burgers are healthy. That's why. Yeah, obviously, it doesn't <laughs> it doesn't feel like a negative. Yeah, no, but th- but think about it, Ian. Two years straight, I've had to do this fucking podcast with a bunch of people that are like, oh, I eat clean all the time, and I train fucking low intensity or high intensity, low volume. Finally, I have a <laughs> person on here that fucking I can I can someone who gets it. I would get <laughs> yeah. that. that just, yeah. I don't know if it. I I don't know if I get it, but I'm with you. I'm <laughs> definitely not getting it. Ugh. Anyway, what's going on this week, guy? How's your podcast Hot going? Man. How's Good. how's how's mutant in the mouth doing? You guys having Good. fun? Yeah, it's not. Listen, having your own podcast is not easy. It's a it's work. I, so I applaud you for. Yeah, but are you having fun? Yeah, I enjoy it. That's good. That's all that matters. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it should be easy. It's just you and Nick. You're yeah. not like. Hey, listen, the hard part about podcasting is when you're trying to find guests and like. Yeah, talking to different people. If you're talking to the same people every week, it's not that hard. Yeah, no, no I'm just like the whole the setup thing, like getting it started. Like it's all new to me. Yeah. Are you? Is it's it also you... different. Sorry, good. No, no, go ahead, Ian. I was gonna say the dynamics also different with like two people versus four. Like with two, like you, it's only two people to converse. With four, it's like I don't got much to say. These guys can say shit until I got something to say, and then like you know, <clears throat> it's definitely easier with three people, more people, or four people. Yeah, but me and Luke did one on one for yeah. like you know almost a year wow yeah yeah so i mean it, it's good if you have a good dynamic you can bounce off each other mm-hmm. um but you're right Ian. it is you know it is a little bit harder if somebody doesn't feel like talking then it kind of gets tough and nick's not like excuse me like not a huge talker to begin with so yeah you know but he he, he talks he talks a good amount so it, it makes me happy are you guys going to start having guests on no i mean we haven't really even talked about that because we it's only a couple episodes in and we have me and him have just so much other like stuff to talk let's, about. Let's, let's, let's be honest. You don't have anything else to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, it's like, it's like bodybuilding and eating ass. And that's it. <laughs> <laughs> that's every podcast and food. You can add food, that's but fun. that's us. That's us too. We talk about ass yeah. every week. Yeah. It's not any yeah. different. Ass food, bodybuilding. <laughs> podcast. That is podcasting. And yeah. scene. Pretty much. Um, I got to show you guys this. Uh, if I could find it real quick, I'm going to get your thoughts on this, especially, especially guys' thoughts. What car? Uh, one sec. I think this or, is so car or motorcycle. How do you like your Raptor? Uh, I love it. I love it when I'm by, wait, let, let me rephrase that. I love it when I'm by myself. What? Right. Why? Because your wife I, gets scared when you drive I, fast. I care about everybody else that's with me, and my dog was more comfortable in the back of the Cadillac, mm. and my wife was more comfortable in the Cadillac. And when I pick up Paul for the gym, if he's got to sit in the back, there's cap- captain's chairs in the back, so he was more comfortable. So the only person that's enjoying the truck is me. Yeah, <laughs> and that makes it. Well, hard that's, to, what you, that's what you buy it for, I guess. But, I know, but that yeah. makes it hard to hard to like have fun when everybody yeah. else is like, "Oh, this sucks," because <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> you know I mean? so. But other than that, I love it. I think it's great. But I don't know. Maybe I should have listened to you. 
Who knows? I leave what were you going to get instead? Are you showing us something? Yeah, I am. Uh, here, we'll come back to that. What do you guys think of this? Uh, here we go. I saw this briefly. Did you? Yeah, that guy Matt Walsh was talking about what it. What do you think about this figure skater guy? You like her? Is she old Nana Man? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Uh, oh, not even good. <laughs> what is this? I don't know. I just want to know if you like her. If she's good, she's not. definitely not good. But this you can't, be, this can't be. Re- this can't be serious. It's fucking real, dude. Oh, no. yeah, it's real. We mean first national figure skater. This is not a national level figure skater. It's fucking real. It's the first well, national level figure, figure skater. Most hasn't figure skated first... sixteen years, and that would be better than that. It's the first national figure skater of this. Background. <laughs> <laughs> who is who is who is that? It was the is the first trans figure skater. Oh, it was the dude. Yes. <laughs> oh, I was right. Oh. Yes. What, are, what are they doing on the fucking ice? They can't figure skate. Bro, I don't understand. <laughs> I don't even get me started. I'm gonna get canceled. I so I'm so trying to get started. I'm so trying to get you started. <laughs> yeah, like I, I don't even understand the the premise of that. It's like like it's so ridiculous dude. It's your what, are you, what are you trying to okay it's like so you you identify as a woman so you want to compete in whatever but you're going to get the backlash but you're not even good enough to be competitive against women anyways yeah. you know it's like at least if you're going to do it try and take advantage of the system to like you know be better than them it's like okay men are better than women in a lot of sports at least i'm going to take advantage of the system by like pretending to be a fucking girl you know <laughs> but not even doing that yeah i i don't I don't I understand what he's like. Fuck this! <laughs> Guy's gonna lose his shit. Wait, 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 wait! I Let's don't know. Hear him I... screaming in the other room. I don't know if I. I, I don't know if I got to cut this out, but I want to show it to you guys anyway, just in case. Let's see. Deaf mute trans woman to Griff. Sing it, man. I think I've seen this. It's here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you see this and you think this has got to be the Babylon B SNL skit when things can still be funny. Comes to my mind is Wait. like, hey, bye. Ela é super famosa na cidade dela e ela, embora tenha essa limitação de ser deficiente auditiva, ela tenta. It's like fucking whale no song. What are you saying? Import- Wait, I gotta find just the clip. What, what, what am I watching? <laughs> Death, mute, and trans. That's a fucking trifecta. What? <laughs> How do I enlarge this? The fucking sea lion up there. <laughs> what the fuck? What is that? Like I don't understand how you can have the word mute in the in the thing and then have someone singing. <laughs> it's That's like, like saying a blind race car driver. Listen, no, it's like it's like saying the blind person, you know, fucking tells you the colors of the rainbow. Like it's like it's not you can't see it to do it, you know? Guys, <laughs> guy. That was supposed to be Whitney Houston. <laughs> that was what? a co- that Which was a song. I, I I'll always remember. love you. That was a cover of a Whitney Houston song. <laughs> Did she win? I don't know, but I'm like that's that sound right there is what the sound Mike made when he fell out of his truck. Yeah. It is. That's like, that's like, that's like, <laughs> <laughs> like, what was that? Was what that a Whitney Houston cover? How did, you, Houston how did cover? you stumble upon that? Oh, it was all over. It was all over the internet one day. People were just sharing it left and right because of how fucking funny it is. But I listen. It's almost like they just like it's like um, they're trying to find like the the worst of the they're best. Try, of they're the trying best to find. The they're trying to find the person with the yeah. most afflictions. Yeah, and they win like the Olympics for having like the worst things possible. Like this person's yeah. deaf, mute, and they're trans. They're like, oh, let's put her on a pedestal. Yeah. Like, why? Like, why? Why are you doing that? And then you let her sing, and you're like. People no, because, laugh. Then, because there'll be someone in the comments there, they'll be like, what the fuck is this shit? And then someone will be like, well, at least she's up there trying, blah, blah, blah. So, like, <laughs> try it home. No, but what <laughs> what happened? Don't you remember there was a period yeah. of time where like, if you just sucked at something, you just sucked? 
yeah. and nobody gave a shit who yeah. you are. You're just shit. You're yeah. like, you're sucked. There wasn't a fucking caveat to like, yeah. oh, well, but they are. You well, know? they have all these afflictions, so we have to like them now. But you're, if you suck, yeah, they you still suck. fucking suck. Yeah. Celebration of mediocrity all over the world. Mm-hmm. <laughs> just be like... mediocre or fucking awful. We'll, we'll reward you if you're part Is of it... an agenda that's trying to be pushed, right? Is it yeah. me or people just have trouble accepting who they are? Like, I can't, like, if you ask me to dunk a basketball, I'd be like, I'm shit. I can't dunk a basketball. I just can't. I'm okay. not going to be like, I'm not going to be like lower the net for me two feet and then I'll dunk a basketball. I'll fucking say that shit. <laughs> yeah, that's, why, that's why I competed in the 212. That's right. <laughs> oh, no, oh, no. He, he needed that. He needed that handicap, you know? Well, Mike, let me tell you <laughs> Mike, Mike, I'm the only motherfucker that, that come, me and me, you know, Jose just joined. So before that, I was, I was a punching bag. He's golfing from the women's tees, you know. <laughs> Listen, I'm a fucking punching bag too, guy. Don't feel bad. Last last podcast I did with Paul, uh, Samson, and Ben, we were talking about financial freedom and fuck you money. And I was saying Ben was like, "Why?" And I was saying all the things I wanted, and they were all basically calling me greedy. He, that's well, you are greedy, but that's okay. I'm not greedy. <laughs> what do you figure? Hey, out of out of the four of us, who actually pays people? Fuck you all. I'm not greedy. Who do you pay? I got to pay my videographer. <laughs> yeah, me too. I'm on that one. <laughs> no, but it, it, I was I took a beating for like 15 minutes because I want. You even admitted you admitted you're selfish, which would mean you're also greedy. No, I don't, I'm not. not greedy is not the right. Greedy is not the right word. No, greed I'm, isn't the right word for wanting things like. I'm that. I'm very generous, but I do like material. Be, yeah, material. So you're vain. So you're vain. All bodybuilders are vain. They look, yeah. themselves, they look themselves in the mirror fucking all, all day long. All bodybuilders are vain. <laughs> all they do is look in the mirror and beautiful. flex. <laughs> I don't do that shit no more. Yes, you do. You just posted like a fucking leg video the other day. <laughs> oh, so I can't post a leg video? You're 40 years old. You're still posting leg No, videos. I was posting my fucking, my tail. Yeah, no. when, was the last time, when was the last time you were like getting changed or something? You're in your underwear and you just like hit a few poses and you're like. I could do this. Uh, right, you know? Last week, like right before the podcast. Last week, but the reaction was stop doing this. Just it was don't. This just just don't. Fucking terrible. Yeah. It was yeah. just don't don't pose anymore. Just get in the shower. <laughs> <laughs> I avoid I avoid mirrors now. I don't fucking look for them. Yeah. You walk by and you're like this. Yeah, I just turn away. I'm like, no, don't. It's never going to be good enough, Ian. You can't. You can't be. No, you can't be top twenty in the world or whatever, and then be like happy when you're fucking you know not like that anymore it's not ever going to be well maybe if you got under 260 <laughs> ian even if i got in sh- even if- no no i was just going to say that even if i got in shape and i was like 220 and i was like it still wouldn't be pose worthy like i wouldn't be like oh let me post some progress photos yeah only 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 guy does that he's like look my legs are still lean my <laughs> legs are fucking look like swiss cheese <laughs> You got a little tear in your fucking quad. This guy gets a little tear in his quad. It makes a whole dude, video. It's not. It. See, this is the thing. It's not little. I don't even know what you're saying. I showed it to my buddy. He was like, "Dude, that's fucking big." No, it's not. Let How's me it feeling? Show it's me. My legs still numb. No, yeah. it's not. You're such a. Where did you tear it? Show it. Bro, I can't feel my leg. I. You think I make this shit? My leg is completely numb to the touch. So nerve damage, bro. I know. No, the doctor said because of the swelling, <laughs> the swelling sits on a nerve and your legs numb. It was my 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 leg was numb the last time too. Let me let me see it. It's bro. Let me see it. Yeah, let's see it. I'll tell you if it's swollen. <laughs> like this is like zero swelling. It's like still detailed. <laughs> Why is your quad separated? <laughs> <laughs> I can't feel this. I have no feeling from. Um, I feeling here. Right about can here. You do, can you do like a quarter turn? Like turn to the side and straighten your leg. It's that hole. See it? Barely. Bro, are you kidding? <laughs> the size of this thing. Here? Barely, notice- barely noticeable. This is what every muscle on Fuad's body looks like. Yeah. Oh, he, he, <laughs> no, he's being, isn't that, he's isn't like, that normal? Mike, Mike, he's being an asshole. Isn't that normal? <laughs> I thought that was normal. That's what- Mike, you I can see it, right? Fucking- yeah, I can see it. Okay. Yeah. Fuck you, Ian. You're still young. You'll catch up. I showed it to Mike. The first day I did it, I showed it to him. He's like, "Oh, oh, that's it. Well, you're fine." <laughs> <laughs> Look, I tore, I tore my 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 quad a year ago. He was like, "That's not, that's fine." Everything that I tear, he's like, "I tore that." I tore the same thing. I tore way. I tore mine like, way worse than that. <laughs> no, that's not why. If it's in the listen, 
whenever I had any tears, if they were in the belly of the muscle, I never stressed it. Yeah. It was usually only if it's at the tendon muscle conjunct uh, junction or in the tendon itself. If it's no, in the, mean, like, because if it's in the tendon muscle junction, they can't do surgery because it's like right where they attach, right? Yeah. And if it's in the tendon, then you're also kind of fucked unless you tore it right off the bone, they can surgically attach it. Yeah. But if it's in the belly of the muscle, it will there's so much blood supply, it will reheal itself. Yeah. No, like he told me that he told me that whole world will be just, it'll never change. No, no, the divot will still be there, but the functionality the of it will still be there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, don't know if it, I don't know if it repairs itself because I tore my pec, I tore the muscle a belly off here, off the tendon. Yeah. And there's still a massive hole. So. No, but you tore but <laughs> but that's what I said though. That was like the muscle tendon junction. Yeah. No, yeah. Well, it was like literally like an inch below that, and I just tore the muscle, like the pec rolled down, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I so it was just a divot. They tried to fix it with surgery, but when did you do that? Mike? No dice. Uh 2000... 2011 at the at the Olympia Expo. Really? Oh yeah. yeah. We told oh, tell yeah. tell tell yeah, me about tell, this. Told the story, yeah. For those who yeah. didn't watch the the solo podcast, tell my tell guy real quick. It's a good oh, story. I, just, I was with Animal at the time. They wanted me to do a demo because they do all the cage shit. And then I said I was doing the 200 pound dumbbell presses. And then fucking when I went to lift them up, boom. <laughs> really? He's not, he in this house right now. <laughs> he's, not, he's not listening. What are you doing, guy? Oh, my, oh my dogs are staring outside. Somebody's breaking in your house. Imagine oh. somebody broke in his house live on the podcast. I get so many views. That'd be uh, fucking there's awesome. Shadow. There's a shadow in your I, There's room. a gun right by my front door. They get shot. And, <laughs> that's and why. Who I would bear like, oh, they're barely breaking in, man. It was way worse than <laughs> in my house. There's actually, two guns. there's actually two guns on my front. Yeah, who would be like, just let him in. Let him in. You guys, you guys That's such, happened to me before. You guys saw your TV. Oh, they stole my whole fucking surround sound. Oh, two guys with ski masks. Normal. I'm not a fucking one upper. The reason, <laughs> no, the reason I say that shit about your tears is because I don't want you to stress about it. Yeah, you don't want to get down. I do the same thing with you. So I'm too. like, oh, it's okay, man. It's in the belly of the muscle. You'll be. It's no, not because it's not because so I'm trying you, to. Did you think it was bad when I showed you, or you still thought it wasn't bad? No, I'm being honest. I honestly believe that when you have a tear in the muscle, the belly of the muscle. It's you're way better off than it had it being an attendant. Agreed. Way better. Yeah. So that's all I was saying. I wasn't saying like because I feel like you'll get you'll get back to work in the gym a lot sooner than had it been. It's an just, you know what it, is? it wasn't. It really wasn't the, the tear, and it, it was just the fact that like like I told you in, in the, the podcast, <laughs> we it, it's just a simple fact that I, I like training a certain way, and I just speaking of that, I'm gonna I'll come back to that. That's a really uh, depressing thing. I know where you're going with that, but go it ahead. is. Yeah, you go know, ahead. and then like. I, I don't know. It's just it. I like walking into a gym and 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 having a certain mentality, and I can't. I literally can't do that you anymore. Still can. Like, you still can, guy. I have that mentality. I, I, so I've been. I've been really. I've been slowing my reps down and just trying to focus more on like, you know, contracting the muscle rather than just like you know, yeah, constant time under tension. But um, I don't know. It's just something like not being able to scream and like fucking you know. I just I, I can't explain it, man. You know you can make. You know you can make lightweight feel yeah. really fucking heavy right yes yeah so yeah. that's what i've been doing i mean go like today i went slow on everything i did like super slow yeah but i'm just saying that's like, like training a lot more than me because i'm not like when i'm done bodybuilding i'm like i'm so ready to give that up you know no, i love See, I, but that's like, i i did this is this is what people don't understand and and it sounds corny but i did i was i was working out long before i even knew what bodybuilding was well so was i, I but like no clue no i know. legit had no idea that this existed. So wait, no. wait, wait, wait. I, start, I started training like at the Y when I was like 13. I didn't even hear bodybuilding or know anything until I was like 19, 20. But yeah. I don't know. Like I just so long of like a career and it's like doing the same thing over and over. And like, look, I love training, but training is now my job. Like it's just my job. And I'm I'm excited to retire from my job. You know, like, okay, but wait a minute. like hey, I want to retire, but still go to the office for two hours a day. Like, fuck that shit, you know? <laughs> okay, but I'm not saying I don't want to train, but the intensity and the style and the loads that I train with and pushing things to failure. And like, I have absolutely no fucking interest in doing that. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so that that's, but that's exactly where I am. So like what you're saying is kind of how I feel too about training, but the hardest part, like when you say bodybuilding is a job, the job, <laughs> the job part of it, part of it for me was not the training. Was the same, same, same. That was the, that was the fun part. The, the eating part was the job. For yeah. Me. Okay. I, look, I, it's, I, I obviously but I, like but wait, but wait, before a lot I... more than eating. One sec. I like training a lot more than eating. Obviously, nobody likes 
fucking eating like a bodybuilder for 10, 12, 15 years on end. But yeah, yeah. I don't know. Like I, I'm excited to like see that chapter off when I'm done. Like I still want to train. I still love to train. I'll find new goals with training to keep myself healthy or whatever it is, but train to the capacity that I train now. Like I'm I'm more than ready you to think, get it. No, no, but wait a minute. Lighter, wait. Smaller. But wait do a minute. you think that you're training? Do you think that you training to the the level at? Because I'm aware of like how strong you are. I think everyone is. But it's like, do you think that if you kind of like took that down a notch and and incorporated stuff like you view how you would want to lift after? Sure. Obviously, it's not intense. Do you think that that might give you that kind of homeostasis where you're like, now I'm able to just do what I'm doing, but not punish myself? Yeah. No. Because like, let's face it, you have more you have more fucking mass than the three of us combined sitting here you know what i mean so it's like you don't have a problem with that yeah i don't i don't like what you just said i'm just joking <laughs> i'm just joking no but it's just no, like I... it's just like it's, it's I, I understand what you're getting at when you're when you're saying like the pounding on the body and this and that but i'd be like i obviously what you do works for you there's no fucking no one can argue that no it works. It, it's not even like the style that i train at or anything i think it's mm. just like Pushing myself to that level, whether it's under heavyweights or lightweight or whatever yeah. it is, I'm just like ready to like, I just want to go into the gym and like get a pump and not try hard. You know? can, I, can, <laughs> like, I, yeah. can I answer this? Can I answer this now? Yeah. I'm exactly, I'm exactly where you are, Ian. Like where you're talking about, that's exactly where I am. Like me and Paul go in there and we used to, we used to drink our shit, our pre-workout shakes on the way to the gym in the car. So when we walked in the gym, it was literally this right, every yeah. single time it was five minutes on the fucking treadmill. And then bang, we're going. We're not talking for the next hour, right? And it's full fucking blast all the way through. Now we get to the gym. We mix our pre-workouts at the gym. Yeah, you talk for a while. We'll talk for fucking half an hour, 45 minutes. Then we'll start working out. And when we get into it, then we'll actually start training. But it's still not what it was five years ago, like 10 years ago. It's more, (laughs) it's just fun. It's fun now, right? Like, I don't think, look, even if I wanted to, or I don't know about guy, I'll speak for myself. I don't even if I wanted to, I couldn't go back to the way I trained in 2011. Even if wow. I was healthy, even if I was healthy, because there's no, there's nothing on the line. Yeah, it's, it's different when you're like, I got this show to do, I got these guys to beat, I got this shit to prove. Push yourself to that place. It's yeah, different. yeah. You can't, you can't take yourself there if you no, don't. And like, look, I, and yeah. I don't want to, this to be construed as like I don't love training or I'm not like enjoying my training now, but I'm re- like. You're enjoying it a different way now. I'm enjoying it now as I, I like being productive and like challenging myself towards making myself a better bodybuilder. That challenge of like, how much can I push myself in that performance capacity is very fun to me. Yeah. But like, I'm also not trying to do that for the rest of my life. You know, it's almost like, like it's yeah. almost like if I think back to it, it's almost like you're enjoying it, but more in a competitive sense than a, than a, just an overall fun. I mean, like I would just want to go in the gym someday. I'm like, man, I'm just going to do fucking 20 minutes of biceps and then fucking go home. Fuck this shit. You know, like, like that's all. Like, I just want to like do what I feel and like not stress about it too much and not put that pressure on myself to like perform at that level. Like, you know, and and I, what I'm done body, I mean, this is easy to say now, but like, I want to lose a lot of weight, (laughs) you know, like I want to be able to run. I'd like to be able to run, like run track again. Like at least like I'll never be fast again, but at least to do something to, put that energy into that competitive energy or something that's ah. I can do. That's not being big, you know, me too. Me too. I want, I want to do that too. It's just not happening. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, delete door, delete door yeah, I'm, I'm way less of an eater than you. So I think for me to get light will be easier. <laughs> can I, can, I need to confess something and I hate, I hate to confess this, but it's really shitty, but I have to tell you guys. So you uh, probably on three different occasions this year, it's only three, only three times. Me and Paul went to the gym. We sat down. We mixed our pre-workouts. We said, fuck it. Fuck it. We drank drank them. We drank them and started talking. And like an hour and a half went by. We're like, ah, let's just go home. And we just left. (laughs) Really? (laughs) And we just left. Yes. Because we just... But we didn't give a five. Like, you know what? We'll kill it tomorrow. Don't yes. worry about it. <laughs> That's it. I don't want to have that pressure that if I leave the gym like you just did, yeah. that I feel even one ounce of guilt for that. You know, I felt I felt a little guilt. That part's still in me. Okay. But, we'll, but give it, we'll give it one ounce, but no yeah. more than that. But it know? was like one ounce. Yeah, it wasn't like... <laughs> it, it Did it bother you? Did it bother me? Yeah, like mentally. Uh, For five minutes. And then I didn't give a shit anymore. Yeah. Because I... Because yeah. I... Look, I have nothing... I don't have to look a certain way anymore. So when I train, oh, I'm just training. 
I, when I train, I'm just training for fun. So yeah. for me, I was like, well, I had a good time shooting the shit with Paul for an hour. Fuck it. We'll just come back tomorrow. And the next day we came back and had an awesome workout. Sometimes yeah. that, sometimes that day off can help. Yeah. Cause we, sure. cause we still, sometimes we'll go four days straight. So if we, if we somehow get a break in there by accident, it actually can be helpful. Mike, you've always been like a bigger guy. Like even if you barely ate and like really didn't train, you'd still be like a two hundred seventy pound guy, right? Yeah, like I'm three I'm three hundred right now, and I'm yeah, just doing what I want to do basically. Yeah. So, but I've always like like I said, like I had the same idea as you, in the sense that like I wanted when I was done, I knew I wasn't going to compete anymore because I was like, there's just too much shit going on with my body, and I need to. I'm doing this job now; it's just not going to happen. And so I was like, I got down to like, I was boxing a lot and I got down to like 260 and I felt like I was a fucking feather. Yeah. Like compared to like, if you know, you've been 300, 300 pounds, it's like 260. I'm like, fucking feel like lightning. I look at myself on like a video and I'm like, wow, you're not lightning. <laughs> you fucking feel like it. <laughs> My arms are light and shit, but it's like, yeah, I had that same thing feeling when I got done with lifting too. And then. I just really like it's almost like when I decided that bodybuilding was done and I kind of pulled my like stepped on the brake a bit and pulled back. It's like that's when like football and everything I had done up to that point kind of like snowballed and caught up with me. And yeah. I was like, that's when I had like the hip, my first hip surgery. And then I just had the replacement like five months, four months ago now. So it's like, you know, it all seems to like when you stop, when you stop that grind, like you have this grind of lifting and like grinding and pushing through these intense vertigos, it's like your body's like, okay, here you go. <laughs> like, yeah. Enjoy that. Because it's like, you're, you're almost like, it's like, if you guys have played sports, like guy played football and stuff. It's like, I played football. Like I had all this shit going on with me during the season. So I might have like a high ankle sprain or a fucking fucked up shoulder. <laughs> they get you good enough to play and you get the fuck out there. And you don't realize what's happening to you because mm -hmm. you're literally anatomically fucking up your body because you're creating all these imbalances and all that shit seems cool because you're young yeah. and then when you get older it's like, oh. yeah and you're like holy fuck my shoulder doesn't move now because there's no cartilage left in there and it's like mike, just like that mike what hmm. level did you play football at like at the, what was the highest level you played at well i played uh one double a i played for university of rhode island so it's like okay. one below like the big yeah, one a yeah, yeah. programs we were so in like the how many years did you do that for? Well, I went to college. I went to you know, Rhode Island. I was there for five years because I redshirted my first year. So I, sure. I, I tore my that. ACL. Redshirt basically is like you don't – you could you get to don't go to school. Don't waste a year of eligibility. Yeah. So you're yeah. only eligible to play four years. Yeah. Yeah. So they instead of ruining that year for you, they just basically say you're not going to play. You can practice, but you're not yeah. going to play in any games. Okay. Okay. So, so you're, an old, you. you're an old senior. Yeah. So you play, It was so the best you, thing. When you say – they get you good enough to go out there and then you go out there. Are you talking about like painkillers or what, like, what are you, what are they doing? Are well, no, it might, it might be painkillers, but it's probably, yeah, it's just like, like I had a high, I had a bad time with getting high ankle sprains, which anyone who's had a high ankle sprain, it's like worse than breaking your leg. Cause it's like, you can't do shit. <laughs> yeah. So they basically, they'll, they'll tape your ankle and then they'll spat over your cleat. So yeah. they'll make it like a fucking cast. Uh, and I that see. foot, your foot flexion goes from like this to like, nothing yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. So you're yeah. running on a stump like yeah. <laughs> pounding down so like all that shit like you're doing that every week because it's like well you better like, you think there's pressure in in bodybuilding right but it's like you got to go on football and perform every week like those nfl yeah. guys are god knows what they're doing to play every week when they're oh. fucked up yeah 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 How but is that like, like, i don't know mike now it's it's a lot yeah. different though because well yeah for sure if you watch I, I we were always watching the games this weekend i mean watching those I games i can't even watch football that one game ended because the guy put his hand on the quarterback and pushed him when he had one foot out of bounds. Yeah, it's I like a team bouncing match. It sucks now. It's awful. How big were you when you played football, Mike? What was your weight? The highest I was on, on field was 270. Were you like an O-line or D-line? What did you play? D-line. What, what, what position? Tackle, end? I was I was a slanted nose, so I was a one technique. Oh, okay. And I played I played 3-2. But I just was like a – because I was a smaller – Lineman for like yeah. height wise, size wise, I was just a, a nose, so I just shoot gaps. That's all I did. So you played the middle of all the shit. Yeah, just getting double double teamed by fucking monsters. Are you playing? Get your head smashed. Yeah. <laughs> sounds awful. I know that sounds, sounds like the worst sounds... comment ever. <laughs> as soon as I said it, I was like, "That's not what I want to say." <laughs> <laughs> so 
you played did you quit playing football because your hip or what made you stop playing football? no no i just graduated oh so, okay and then you didn't yeah, want to did. you didn't want to pursue anything else i wasn't good enough okay so, okay i mean i had offers like i'm sure you go well, you don't know really but if you go to like the cfl basically has a draft where they grab canadian players and they'll draft you in case you decide to play in the cfl yeah for lack of a better way of explaining it so Mm-hmm. If you're in the states and you're a U.S. player, every CFL team has like a I don't know what the the percentage is, but you have those certain percentage of Canadian players on your roster. Okay. Oh. So they'll basically draft these like prospects from the U.S. NCAA because they deem them to be like like higher value, I guess. Even yeah. though there's great players up here, so they'll draft the rights to you. So if you t- decide to come and play, you're like, okay, well Calgary owns the rights to you, so you got to oh. go fuck with them first, right? Yeah. So my coach has told me, like, you know, they're asking for tape for you. I'm like, they're only asking for tape because I'm Canadian. <laughs> they don't want me on that team. Yeah, but did you – why wouldn't you – okay, well, I mean, you obviously made whatever choices you made, but just out of curiosity, why wouldn't you it take was, advantage of that and take get on one of those teams? Did it pay, is it paying enough? Is it worth it? No, no, it's also like you guys talked about with, like – it's like it correlates to, like, that feeling of going in the gym and not having – not being able to do what you want to do. I yeah. didn't have that desire to play football anymore. So okay, I got it. Whether I was good enough or not, which I I know I wasn't good enough to can you continue on playing. Like if I was, I just didn't have that desire. And you got to have the fucking desire to be there to yeah. play football because yeah. it's like, especially positions like uh, on the line, where you're smashing every fucking play. Mm-hmm. You're banging with people. It's like your body yeah. being fucked. You're not playing a skill position where you're like a receiver and you're <laughs> catching, yeah. running. You know what I mean, yeah. there's a lot of endurance in those longevity in those positions. Linemen are like. Three or like four my hands years. are fucked. Yeah, yeah. My yeah. hands are fucked. I only played four years of college. Like my ring, my fingers fucking bent. They're all fucked up. They, all don't, they don't bend. Yeah. Are those are those from football or like those, those from, don't bend? Are those my from football or bends crooked? Are those from security? No, those are from football. Oh, security Jesus. didn't help. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Breaking out people's fucking teeth. Guy, yeah. what a uh, how how long did you play? What's going on, guys? I just want to tell you about a new product I've been involved with for a little while. It's called Bash Mouth Gum, and it's a caffeine gum. So as you guys know, I love my coffee. I like to drink one or two coffees a day, but usually if I start to drink them too close, it gives me a little bit of a stomach ache, and I kind of get to feel a little bit jittery. With Bash Mouth, it's only 130 milligrams of caffeine, So it's and it's like a steady flow of energy because it's in a gum. So I don't get a jittery feeling. I just feel like a nice, clean long energy. And this is actually what I use to get me through the five or six hour podcast time that we did at the Olympia. So if you guys want, if you're gamers, if you want something during your workout, you don't like that EAA breath or whatever, or you're talking to a girl in the cardio machine and you don't want to stink like post-workout breath. uh, Or if you just want some, if you're going on a long drive and you just want some constant energy, this is the way to go. Guys, check it out. Bashmouth.com for your energized gum you go uh 15 years you play you're running back uh what what, what? What were you i started off actually as nose guard like you and running no you didn't i have because you have to go two ways in high school not not like peewee i'm talking about like in university (laughs) i start i started when i started playing i was a nose guard and a running back high school i was a tailback and a middle linebacker College, I got recruited for tailback, and they moved me to cornerback, which I just was horrible at. What the fuck kind of truth? Oh, is dude, it was the dumbest thing. It was, they took me from – I mean, I don't know how much about football you know, but they took me from – I was a running back and a middle linebacker my whole entire career. So they took me from a position where my first two steps were always towards the football. I yeah. never had a backpedal. The only time I had to worry about anybody – going anywhere was like when a tight end was running a crossing pattern or there was like a little dump pass. Other than that, I didn't cover anybody. Then I had to go yeah. cover fucking guys that run in a four four forty that were fucking six feet tall. I was horrible. It's horrible. <laughs> well, but you're also the not, worst transition ever. In but, you're also, horrible. but you're also not tall enough to be a middle linebacker in college. Middle linebackers aren't that tall, bro. Yeah, they gotta see over the shit. Five right? eight. Yeah, no, no. Oh. I was I, was, I yeah, my middle linebackers are five eight, five ten. Wait, are you talking like NFL middle linebacker? Because not five eight. No, he's talking at the level he was playing at. Yeah. Really? Five Actually, eight? no. The guy that played on my team was 5'7". Mike really? Mancini. Yeah. I remember middle linebacker. Where did you go to college? Western Connecticut State University. We played one double-A schools. Oh. Um, but I was, it was D3. Oh, okay. Mike, does he know what he's talking about? With Say what? 
Oh, no. Mike, you said no? I just said no to say no. <laughs> you, know, you know I love you, man. <laughs> so you guys know each other from what? Like getting into clubs or what? I know you guys know oh, each other. I was never a partier. No, I met I met Guy at, uh, what's Maz's gym called? Body, uh, body Works. Yeah, Body Works. Like back in the day, I was dating a girl in New Jersey, and she would train with Maz. And she brought me to that gym a few times. I just met him. Who's the blonde guy you used to train with? Is it Rob? You know what I'm talking about? Rob Ewell. Yeah, that's the guy. Yeah. yeah so and then you... me and Mike. Huh? Go ahead. Go ahead. No, then me and Mike kept in touch. And then Mike started uh, doing security for Drake. And then he would be like, hey, I'm coming to town. Want to, want to, want to fucking get in? I was like, all right. <laughs> so you're letting you hooked me. Up, you hooked me up during COVID with that. Uh, that dude who got me in that gym. In like yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That gym was sick, by the way. I don't remember right, what right? the name it was. Do you but, remember uh, you know what the name of it is? It's like, uh, fuck. This gym, the it? layout, though, is like, it's like the top floor is like Where was Skyward. it? Where was it? I don't know. Like, I want to say like Bronx area. It was like, kind of weird. No, maybe. But the shit was like all locked down from COVID and they had it all dark, but like fucking, and they wouldn't turn the lights on. So you're like working on the dark. Well, it's got like the boxing ring and it's like right under the fucking railroad. What color no, was it? I don't remember, man. It was a weird layout though. There was like rooms and then there was like cardio overlooking, like lower <laughs> cardio, and then the top floor was like a skylight over everything. I got to say, I uh, forget. I'm drawing a blank. Mike, do you drink? Uh, no, not often. Like if I'm, if I go out and, which is very rare. I'll drink, but are you gonna be, are you gonna be at the Arnold? No, I'm not going. Uh, why? Unless someone wants, unless I'm invited by somebody, I'm not going. Because <laughs> I, just, I, I, just I drove the fucking. I yeah. invited. I'm just inviting you now, but we don't. Yeah, have I'm inviting you. I'm inviting you. We don't have a booth, but I'm inviting you to Sunday dinner. Okay. <laughs> Drive down for Sunday. It is. <laughs> I drove down to Dave to Elite FTS to do Dave's podcast, and I was like, "This is the worst drive ever." <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's probably, it's yeah, worse from where? Yeah, it's like six or seven hours from where you are, eh? Yeah, it was. It was rough. Uh, it's only it's only three and a half hours for me, so it's not that bad. Really? Drive, yeah, because I just crossed the border to Detroit, and then it's like three hours. Oh. From Detroit. Yeah. Yeah. He's got to go around the fucking lake. It's like, Mike, where are you? Toronto. Okay. Yeah. So he's, the the lake's in his way. He's got to go around. So it's yeah. like an extra an extra three hours or whatever. Oh yeah. A um. Well. All right, guy. It's uh your turn, buddy. <clears throat> all right, give it to me. Um. Can, can I can I read? Well, you're the only guy not on here. We got Samson, Nick, 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 Samson, Clarita. <laughs> yeah, Samson. Okay. Sean, Andrew, Monet, Justin, Akeem, Kamal, Patrick. Okay, ready. I know you're going to pick Nick first, so I'm just going to put Nick. Yeah, yeah, we're going to put you in, Nick. Because he won't do the podcast with you anymore if you don't. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I, I think he's going to win. Uh, I would put for two. He is a favorite, for sure. Samson. I'm just looking at names now. I'm thinking I you know what? I actually think Andrew is gonna shock some people. Yeah, I want to change my lineup. All right, well go go ahead. Well guys thinking. I think Andrew so Andrew and Rami switch when he comes in whatever we know. I want to put Patrick above uh Justin. Justin and him switch. Really? Yeah. I think Justin looks pretty good right now. I mean, he's a little bit, a little bit behind looking, but he always brings it in quickly at the end. I think. Where do I have Justin? Yeah, I got Justin in seventh. Akeem looks pretty good right now too, though. I might have to switch these two. What are you saying, guy? You're still. I'm gonna. Up. I'm gonna go. Nope. I'm gonna go. Uh, Rami. I'm going to go Bonac Clarita. And then I'm going to go. Justin. You're putting Andrew. You're putting Andrew this far down. 
Oh, fuck. <laughs> fuck. I knew he forgot him. Yeah. <laughs> Are you just making this decision for him? Yeah. Who's <laughs> your picks? <laughs> Akeem. Akeem. What order do you want here? Well, Pat, that's exactly what I said. But Joe, you put Samson. Hold on. Is this your order, guy? Well, hold on, let me see. Because I, I didn't know where I was going to put Andrew. Who the fuck's Terry? That's me. Stop. Stop. <laughs> Terry. <laughs> Terry. <laughs> Who's Terry? Hulk Hogan? Oh. It's loud. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> Ben's dad decided to get in. He watches the podcast religiously, so we let him. Make, we let him make. Picks on here. Yeah, we should. We let him get some picks. Yeah. I just don't know if I want to put Andrew there. You think Andrew's good enough to be third? I'm almost thinking Andrew is gonna shock the fuck out of everybody. You think he'll be uh, on 100? percent He's got a brand new camp in his corner, and it could make a difference for sure. I yeah. feel, I feel like who's 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 coaching him still? Farah so, Acido is oh. coaching him now. Oh, I'm sorry. Right. Okay, okay, okay. So go back, go back, go back, go back, go back. And the uh, Chris Psycho Lewis guy. Oh, that I knew. I for I forgot Acido was coaching him. I totally forgot when I was doing that. Like I almost feel like if Andrews and in... okay, let's just actually let's just do a see, like like wait, see, wait, I... wait, wait, wait. I want to ask a question, and I'll ask everybody individually. <laughs> if Andrew. Is in good shape front to back. Does he win the show? If no. the back, if the back is equal to the front, does he win the good show? shape? Or if his back is equal to how 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 conditioned his front has been, does Andrew win the show? I think Nick's unbeatable. The show, to be honest. Yeah, really? I think so too. yeah. I don't know. I, I think I think Nick is going to be better than he was at the Olympia, and I think that Olympia. He was really good, and I think he was a, a, still a step ahead of Rami and uh, Samson and Andrew and those guys. I think that top three, especially, was kind of like a very solid group ahead. You know, I think I think Nick, I think Nick, Hottie, and and Derek were kind of like their own three because I, I didn't see yeah. Brandon being that close to Nick, and I didn't see Rami being that close to them either. <laughs> well, I'll say this: I think you're right about the Olympia, but. I don't think with a few tweaks that whole lineup could have been a little different. I think if Andrew was in shape, I think if Rami, well, Rami's a little different, but if Samson was in better condition, like a lot of that changes. If Brandon, if Brandon was also out of shape too, so a lot of it changes on a few dip, on a few key points. I don't think they were solidly one, two, three, no matter what. I think you, they were solidly no, one, but no, no matter what, or ifs, ands, or buts. And like I look, I I've said here myself, I think Andrew is probably one of the most impressive physiques on the planet when you see him in person. Um, but I think Nick has a, just a very different level of muscularity and hardness, mm -hmm. especially from the side and the back. Um, you know, Andrew's very big, but he doesn't have like crazy, like, you know, front to bit back thickness like Nick does because he is so tall, like through the arm and the delt and the chest and the side leg. And like, you know, things like that, that Nick just has in spades and Nick's back shots are just fucking insane. His most muscular is insane. Do I think Andrew could, if he was in really good condition, could beat him in an abs and thighs or a front lat or a front double? Maybe. He but wins, do I think he, he beat he, him? He, no. He definitely wins the front shots. Yeah, I, I don't. And I just said that. I said front yeah. double, front yeah. lat. And I mean, yeah. front lat is, is Nick would say himself is weak, weakest pose. Yeah. Um, but I think side chest, side tried, back double, um, you know, most muscular. That's it's really hard for anyone to beat Nick in those, man. Yeah, yeah, I could agree with that. I could agree. And his, with that. he looks like his look looks clean right now. Like even the pictures he put up, that side try, like everything looks really like like it's getting Wild, crisper and, and more mature. You know, <laughs> I will say that I think you're right about everything you said, except the unbeatable part. I don't know if I would go well, that far. I didn't. I mean. I don't think he will be beaten at the show. But I'll say that. I think I think I think I could agree with that. But I but I do think it's possible with a few changes. I just because I do think the Olympia could have been different had I mean, if Andrew comes in that good but peeled. Yeah, he's but he can't be front can't match the back. He's got to be if he's peeled. 
Paul gave everybody a fucking run. I think if he's in really good condition, he can beat Rami and maybe Clarita. Um, but I don't think he's beating Nick or Samson. Okay. Were you shocked that Brandon didn't do this? No, because he was in Kuwait for so long that I knew he'd want to go home. Yeah. Okay. He was in Kuwait for like eight or nine months. So he's got, you know, he's got four kids or whatever. So no. um, Mike, do you agree with everything Ian said or do you have any any twists to the, to what he said? No, I agree with that completely. Okay. Guy, you're on the I think page. Nick's going to win for sure. Yeah. yeah, I agree. Okay. The guy that honestly puts the biggest stump in it for me and it's just so hard to place, and I know we talked about this before, is Clarita, man. It's yeah, I know. like he, he could be fucking second or first, or he could be, you know, when you put him next to six foot three giants like Andrew and Samson, he might look like a fucking infant. You know, oh, it's wait a minute. I don't, I, I could have put him, I could have put him in second. No, no, you, one second. Absolutely. I do, if someone put him in second, I wouldn't say you're crazy at all. I'd put him in Nick, second. Yeah, Nick Walker, I mean, thinks, look, obviously they're both with Jansen, so I, I know he's trying to pump up his homeboy, but I think Nick actually believes that Sean could be second. Yeah. <laughs> I agree. Well, I think it's like Ben said. Ben said Sean no. is the kind of physique that could be second or could be sixth. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Literally how he looks in that first call out like because yeah. they'll they'll take all those guys in that first call out. they'll do like a six or a seven man first group six man first group because how many guys they'll be exactly I think they're gonna do i think outs. they're gonna do a four i think do a four or five yeah yeah because there's only eight guys that's true or nine guys so i think they'll do like a five and back a four. To the list? no there's ten guys right <laughs> uh one two three four five six seven eight nine yeah you're right ten so they'll do a I think five, they might do, do a, a five six, and five i think they might do a six and a four depending on what it is whatever either way so, because I don't think I don't think you're going to leave one guy. Like you're not going to leave just Andrew or just Samson or just Clarita back in the second call out. All those top dogs, I think that were like <laughs> Olympia top eight guys. You're going to put in that first group and put them all together. You know, <clears throat> I think guys that were second call out or or third call out or below. Sorry, third call out or below because no one else there is top ten guys. You know, like the the Justins, the uh, Akeems, the Patricks, the these guys. I think there'll be a second call out. Um, and I think that first group is is pretty set in stone. I I could see Justin maybe working his way into that group if he's really really on, but it would be tough for him. I think <laughs> Justin. I think Justin last year on the Friday, if he shows up like that, he's good enough yeah, to be yeah. in the top group. Yeah, but like, who does he push out? Like, you know. Well, I mean, a lot of it depends on conditioning, right? If yeah. if Andrew if Andrew doesn't if Andrew shows up like the Olympia, but Justin shows up like he showed up on the Friday last year at the Arnold. I don't think he beats Andrew, but I I think. Because, I mean, like, look, even at this Olympia, like, like you know, say Andrew or uh, Justin at 100% wouldn't have been eighth at this, this Olympia, you know? I just remember Justin's look last year on the Friday was incredible. He was, third, he was third. Judges had him at third. And, what, and then Saturday was when Saturday he got he, Saturday, they moved him back to fifth. And then yeah, and awful. Samson Samson pulled ahead. Yep. Yeah. So, but he was on the Friday. People were, like, fucking blown away by Justin. Justin yeah. is, is, is a hard one like that because, like, when he's on, he's really good. But when he's a little bit off, it's like, dude, gone. I I've said, said that exact, before. Yeah, we all we've all said the exact same thing. Like yeah. his on the margin last, for error, yeah. his margin for error is small. Like, okay. like, look, I've had some bad showings, but like, I have a bad showing. I still come eleventh at the Olympia, you know, like or come second at at Tampa Pro to Hunter, like, and those are my worst all time looks. Mm. Like Justin could be sixth at the Olympia and then be. Five percent worse and be like second last. You know? there's some, it's funny. There's some guys like that. Like Andrew Akeem is the exact same. Like if you look at Andrew, Andrew was the little, same way. Yeah, Andrew's yeah. Andrew's a little bit off. He still places in the top ten at Olympia. Yeah. No, I so, was I was I was the latter of the two. No, yeah. no, I know, I know. I'm just saying yeah. there's some guys that can get away with being like yeah, yep. Like if you remember Flex Wheeler, he wasn't always shredded, but he would still be in the fucking. Yeah, top. I mean that's the closest comparable to Andrew, really. Yeah. Um, but listen, I want to show you guys one thing that did stand out to me. And you guys can correct me if you think I'm way off on this, but Clarita, I did think, is giving something up in the back. That back lot spread? So the back this looks insane. So the, wait a minute. The back looks insane, right? But when I got to the hamstrings, I'm like, wait a minute. Yeah. I'm see, I see something there. Well, I didn't, look at the age picture of his hamstrings, though. Yeah. I mean, listen, I'm trying to, I'm being extremely nitpicky because he's so good. So. Uh. I just feel like they're thin in comparison to his quads. It still right? flows nicely, but I see what you're saying. I'm only um and look before the Clarita guys jump on me. I'm only saying that because he's so perfect that it's hard to find something. 
But when you look at it from the side, they're very even. Like, I mean, his quads are retarded, but yeah. that's such a fucking sick photo. I know, right? Oh Fuck, that's so crazy. Yeah. But I did notice when I looked at oh. it from, from the back, I'm like, oh, you I was, can see that. Go, look, go to that side chest there, there too. Is, one sec. The only reason I need people to understand the context in which I'm saying this. The only reason I'm saying this is because he's going to stand next to Nick and Nick's hamstrings are wide and thick and he leaves no gap in the middle here. So yeah, no, I, I don't think he can beat Nick. Um, and that's nothing against Sean, but I that, but I just want people to know he's the, only the third reason. best bodybuilder on the entire planet. So I, yeah. I don't think that that's an insult to say by any means. Yeah. Um, but I don't think, you know, next to a guy like Andrew, um, or these kind of guys, but like, even go to the side chest there, you can see his hamstrings are a little on the shallow side. That's some kind of bad, bad angle, but uh, oh, well, up, up there. Yeah. yeah. See, like yeah. he doesn't, oh, they look decent there, but you can still see there's room to be desired and like depth to the hamstring. You well, know? it's just because the quad is so sweet. The quad seems crazy. Yeah. 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 I mean, look, like I, like I said, before people get crazy about it, this is in comparison to Nick, because we're talking about somebody who's, you know, that's his, if he's going to win the Arnold, he's got to beat Nick. So, that's you know, you can that. see, you can see in this side tricep, you could yeah. use a little bit. A little bit more there, but it, it looks like he's flexing his hamstring. I was there. gonna say it's almost like he's not letting it hang here either. Yeah, he's flexing his leg there yeah. a bit, not like letting it just yeah. belly down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He is really hard to find flaws with, man. He's got a, such a beautiful physique. It's crazy. It's just jam like the like muscle per square inch is just crazy, you know. Yeah. 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 Those yeah. hotel pictures above it, I think, are some of the craziest pictures I've seen this year. To these the right. Ones? Like these are just nuts because you get no context for him being 185 pounds. Like you could look at this and if you, if I told you this guy was 290, you would yeah. probably believe me, you know? Yeah, I agree. I agree. Yeah. Because there's no context for, for That's someone's crazy. Thing. hamstrings look great there. Hamstrings, hamstrings look awesome there. there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's like, hard to find. So it's hard to find a flaw, man. The only one I've really, really been able to find. Is just the, the width of the chest. Just the chest width, which which he which he covers with the thickness of the shoulders. Yeah, like he makes up for it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, it's gonna be exciting, man. If fucking clear to wins, <laughs> clear to wins, or Imagine. even even if he doesn't win, even if he just compares, if, even if he wait, just, like if think he about, wins, go ahead. Just think about this: if he beats anybody that we think is going to be in the top five, Rami, Samson. Fucking uh, Bonac, Andrew, like yeah. it changes the game. You're like oh, this guy. At that point, you're really like, if 175, 180 pound Sean comes in as beating 290 pound six feet guys, you really have no fucking case for keeping the 212. I was just gonna say the same thing. Mm -hmm. That's gonna open like, that. Why do you, you have the you do. You, you do. I ask. I asked uh, Jose that. I asked why? him that. That exact. Well, he said because. You get a lot more people competing, and you end up with a Sean Clarita that way. Because Sean Clarita, if if look at this, think of it this, think of it this way: when Sean turned pro, he was not as impressive as he is now. No, right. So when Sean turned pro, if he knew there was no two twelve class, would he have kept on going? No, probably not. Right? He might have been like, "Oh fuck it, those guys are too." He would have stayed as an amateur. Yeah, but because there's a two twelve class, he decided to compete and grow his physique, and now he can transfer over. Right. So it's kind of like you're <laughs> you're giving you're eliminating the chance for guys to want to get into the open class by taking the 12 away. Yeah, agreed. I understand what you're saying, but then it's almost like a farm system. Yeah. Yeah, you know, it's it's yeah. like because I still but That's think, okay, but that's okay. Because I still think the guys like that are really fucking driven to the, be the best would stick out a few years of getting shit on if they if they believed in their heart. Like the Derricks of the world would have stuck that shit out and be a men's open that would have ended up where they are. I think if you believe in your heart yeah, that you're not good, you're still going to pursue it even if you get shit on the first couple of years. I well, agree, what? but the type of people yeah. that you're talking about, Ian, are few and far between. That's the problem. Yeah, sure. sure. But, but so like you have, you have bodybuilding so shows with five people in them. Yeah, but so sure. are elite level bodybuilders. I mean, like there isn't. Oh, what I'm saying is we wouldn't have a platform to compete in if that was the case. Well, you would. You would compete in the open. You just wouldn't place as well. I'm saying there'd be ten competitors. But wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What? Let Let's say Let's say Ian's right. Let's say the guys are driven. Let's say take Guy for example. Guy yeah. Guy turns pro and he's like, you know what? I'm gonna fucking compete in the open. Yeah. It's far more likely that somebody like Sean, like Guy, like well, Derek's not really a two twelve or he's forcing it, but it's more likely that somebody like that would do open shows three, four, five times and say, fuck, man, I just can't. 
These guys are too fucking big. I can't compete there. I'm not. Before I'm not going to compete anymore. Before the introduction of the 202 and the 212, do you think a lot of guys were hanging up for that reason? I don't know. Yes. If they were. Yeah, I do. Oh, Jose turned down his pro yeah. card five times. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Yeah. Hundred percent. Guarantee you. Do you, you think now though, I, those same people would just go the route of classic instead? Absolutely. Both, both. Or 212. Both. Yeah. yeah but both. I was like, saying, if there's no 212, we eliminate 212. We just have bodybuilding. Classic and men's physique. I think those guys, you're still going to have to see. Because a lot of the 212 guys are too heavily muscled. They won't make the fucking. Bro, I won't make the classic cutoff now when I'm retired at my height. Sure. Even if, but, even if he could make the cutoff. His, no, even if I could make the weight made class right now, yeah. even yeah. if I dieted, I could probably not make the weight because I still lost 25, 30 pounds of muscle and I still couldn't make that a five. Ian, Ian I, know, I know a lot of guys who've gotten their pro cards in the middleweight class or the light heavy class that would never even think of competing. Even yeah, Paul, no, no. Paul, Paul even said yeah. to me, Paul goes, you know what? I wish there was two. It was two two at the time. He goes, I wish there was two two when I was competing in, as an amateur. I would have loved to compete in that. He had no aspiration because he knew he was never going to be 240, 250 pounds. Yeah. So you're, you're eliminating a class for a lot of guys that don't want to, don't want to, or can't get to that size or. Think I'll, I'll say this. I wouldn't have taken my pro card. Wait, like I, I get what you're saying, but then on the flip side, and, and I think you also end up like, like someone like, let's say, like Zane Watson. Yeah. I think Zane would have been way su- better suited to move up into the open than to be crushing himself down to 212 every year, you know? But nobody was telling him to do that. No, I know yeah. no one was telling him to do it's that. It's almost like when you give someone a place to be able to do that. Go ahead, Mike. Yeah, it's almost like you need to eliminate that. There has to be a cutoff where you can only drop a certain amount of weight to drop to a, a 212. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. In yeah, the I sense that you're saying Zane could have gone down or could have stayed where he was or like how it is right it's like that's almost did zane have problems making that no, weight cut? zane was just t- like five seven or five eight he was tall so, but i never yeah, heard so of i never eight. i don't remember him having a problem getting in 212 though no, no but, but i think he would no, but and say, out and get way smaller yeah. than yeah that's what he's saying he, was, he could he have was stayed bigger. where he was yeah. yeah he was bigger competing as an amateur than when he yes. was a pro and only because he was competing as a heavyweight you know yeah. yeah listen i feel like it's it's a good thing to have the class it allows people a chance to grow into their physique and then if someone yeah. like if someone like keon starts killing it and he's like you know what oh, no. you know what the answer to this is i'll tell right. you what the answer to this is what? stop giving pro cards to every single class at national shows so then light heavyweights and middleweights and welterweights aren't ending up with pro cards and then it's not an end of road situation for them but a lot you of those uh, some of those wait, some of why? those lighter body go ahead wait no you leave them in the amateur system keep why? that more populated you have more guys trying to work up within the amateur system to heavyweight super heavyweight size classes. i don't know how it is in canada but what? Guys, one at a time. Go, Ian. You're saying, so I'm you just saying to... exactly what you're saying of guys that you know to, can use that basically as a farm system in the 212. Guys that either want to stay in it or move up. You can have that decision in the amateur ranks now. Guy, what were we gonna say? Uh, he was saying keep in the amateur ranks so there there's more competitive. Like I don't know about you, but like here in the states, the amount of amateur competitors overall there's a fucking million. Shit ton. Yeah. So what yeah. are we really doing then? Even talent in the amateur rank when it's fucking flooded with talent anyway. But it's not. You could you could dilute it even more. I mean, now you're gonna have you know lighter classes, you're gonna have guys that were competing in the middleweights moving up to the light heavies, to the heavies. You know, you're gonna have guys that you know <clears throat> are and I mean that's kind of how, minute, that's how it's been in Canada. Wait, like because in Canada, when we were only giving one overall card, who was winning those cards every year? Not fucking middleweights, you know, they no, were guys that's like, not that's not true. When they were doing two cards, like for the four years I was very there. rarely, man. There was a few light heavies, a very few light heavies, like the Khaled Chikawis and guys who actually went on to do something relatively decent as a pro. Um, you know, those guys were winning. But other than that, man, it was all heavies and supers. It was the guys like Mike, like you, like Ben, like two, these were the guys. Out of, out of the four years, two middleweights got their pro cards when I was competing. I out mean, of since I've never seen any, but I mean, like. <laughs> I just don't think I just don't know why you think it hurts anything. Well, I don't think it hurts anything, but I think you would increase the competitiveness of the open class and you would saturate the amateur class with more talent. And I think that's a double positive. But you might so you might also discourage people if you're oh. gonna keep them in an amateur system. Like if they're just like I'm the best in this weight class I won. Well now I just need to I get, get that, but I'm also I'm also not in the game of trying to encourage or discourage people. I think like no. 
No, but you know, why? But you should. To, I don't think we need to give people pats on the backs to, to compete. If you it's want not to a pat on the back, it's, it's not. A, no, it's, it's not just a... it's just saying like these people are a lot of these guys like that are like a, like a Derek. They have to come down to to get in two twelve. They're busting their ass to get to this level when they can stay up. It's like you have to think of the inverse of that is like this little dude who's trying to work his way up to even being two twelve and being competitive. Sure, he's like he's like starts at one sixty. I don't you know I mean so you have the inverse of that. So it's like you have to have something for those guys to aspire to too. And then if they end up growing like a Clarita, where it's like I'm my physique is dominating now, why don't I cross over? Like I said to Fuad last time, it's it almost creates this like super fight effect where you have like it's exciting. a guy in a, a yeah. guy in boxing who comes up to heavyweight who was a cruiserweight and yeah, fights yeah. the heavyweight champ. You know what I mean? It's like it adds like because we're all excited, like we're all talking about Clarita, what could he do? That's like that's half the reason why people it are adds, excited about this it, show. Yeah, it adds another element. I, I don't know, man. I don't think I think you're looking at um Ian, I think you're looking at a lot of bodybuilders with your own personality, and I don't think they all have that personality. I don't think yeah. guy I don't just let me finish. I don't think guys are gonna go from middleweight and be like, Yeah, I'm not gonna get a pro card till I'm heavy or super heavy. They're just gonna quit. Yeah. They're gonna be like, I'm I'm 160 pounds. I'm not gonna keep on trying to do this till I'm 240. Fuck it. Yeah. Like they want their pro card, so they because you got to understand a lot of these. Okay, guys but that's have... the same thing as saying that guys that are like five ten are just going to not per pursue basketball, and we should like make a shorter net for guys that are are shorter. Like it's, no, it's stupid. No, it's not. It's just like it's just like fighting. You have different classes for different fighters. Oh, I, I understand it in 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 boxing because obviously when you're talking about really hurting someone, a, a weight discrepancy can Ian. outweigh a skill discrepancy. Ian, there's not going to be a massive difference in boxing between or UFC. Between a fucking lightweight and a bantam weight. Uh no, but if, if if you have no weight classes then and you have a fucking, you know, Brock Lesnar. I'm not against... saying no weight classes, but I'm saying like they have some weight classes that aren't necessarily sure. absolutely important. But they have yeah. them so more guys will jump in. Right? They're trying to populate the sport. So it's like the same thing. Is that it's why like, you do it? I don't know. I think so, or else I mean, why not get more guys? Why would they have like uh what's the lowest weight? Uh Mike, well, uh, flyweight. Fly, flyweight, flyweight, or bantamweight. Yeah, I think flyweight or bantamweight. I think featherweight's right below lightweight. Anyway, why would they have the lowest class? Barely anybody watches that shit. Yeah, those are like the lowest. Those are like the lowest selling fucking pay per views, or the the fucking. Small have, I mean, you could you think about it? You I get it. I get it with safety issues, but with bodybuilding, I don't know. I don't see it the same, and like it's the same as like looking at it for like. You know any other sport like hockey or basketball or football? Like you're not. Think about if you're going to do that, then take then take away the fucking weight the weight class at the that don't have any weight class at the amateur level because you're minute. promoting a, you're promoting a weight class at the amateur level anyway. Can I ask you a question, Ian? Why do you think they started men's physique or classic for that matter? Well, look, I understand that the reason for those is obviously to bring more numbers to the sport. No, 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 no. but but exactly why did they do it? They knew there was a group of guys. Yes, that, that just want to look good on a beach. The abs, the fucking yes, shoulders, the chest. Want to be bodybuilders the same as men's open bodybuilders. No, no. But what I'm saying is, why not just tell the men's physique guys, "Hey, too fucking bad. Go train your legs. We have open." Yeah, I mean, look. Why not? Why not? Why not tell the classic guys? Too sure. fucking bad. Too fucking bad. I mean, look, if money, if money and popularity to the sport wasn't an issue, I might agree with that. But obviously, if we're taking about getting people into the sport, then sure, okay, I can understand that argument, but. With 212, I just think a lot of those guys could end up in the open just like They're they not. used to be. It would be fine. They're not. I don't it's, think it's okay. the same. It's the same. Ian, it's the yeah. same. It's the same argument that for men's physique and for classic. How do we get these little guys that are turning pro and fucking lightweight, middleweight, light heavy? How do we get them to stick around? Oh, okay. We can create this thing. Now a guy who weighs 150 pounds only has got to gain 20 pounds, 30 pounds instead of gaining 100 to fucking yeah. compete, right? <laughs> And we're discussing we're discussing two anomalies too, right? We're talking about Sean Clarita and well, Derek. Like these are anomalies. Well, are Mike, do you they, think are, they are they aren't because I mean look at the top of the men's Olympia right now. Hottie, 212 guy, Derek, top two guys, 212 guys. You know, then you have Clarita, these guys you're putting in the mix. Bonac was a 212 guy. I mean, like mm -hmm. half of the fucking top 10 in the open right now is fucking 212 guys. So like what if these guys but, can compete but, and get but, to the, look? I'm getting beat by these two 12 guys left, right, and center. They, wait a minute. Would Derek have been in the open bodybuilding if he wasn't a 212 first? Who? Derek. Maybe I don't know. Maybe well, he would have. What, 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 what I was going to say is to go to that. What, what guy said is maybe a lot of these guys got to try them sh their shit out first and then say, hey, you know what? I am good enough. 
but maybe had that class not existed, somebody like Hottie might have quit. Because Ian, I'll tell you this. Here, here, just hear me out. No, no, it, team, but think think of that question. You're for right. Some. You're right. No, like, you're 100 percent right. Would somebody like Hottie, who was like 180 well, really pounds, what we're saying is let's give people more ample chance of success so they don't quit. Yes. Because body insane. no, because bodybuilding is a fucking marathon. So it's not like you can gain 30 pounds in a year. You need to take some time. So let's give them a place to compete. While they're growing, it's like doing a yeah, half. Yeah, the amateur coach. The amateur coach. Right. Hold on, hold on. Hear me out. Go ahead, guys. Sorry. So, Sean, Sean won in a Sean, Kamal, um, Derek, right? Those now I did two open shows, fifth and sixth, uh, at the Arnold Classics. Yeah, but nobody now. Played. Yeah, but see, you're coming fifth and no, sixth. Hold on, my, no, no, my, no, no, my point. No, listen, just listen. Hey, Ian, listen. My point is this: no matter what I ate and the the the, the, the shit that I took, right? Because in my eyes, nobody trained harder than me when I competed. I don't, and, and I'll argue it till. I, but hold on, listen. No, because no, you said this no, last no, time. Listen, it, it, this, it, it doesn't matter. Just, just let him finish. Just let him finish. It's a stupid argument. It's a stupid have, argument. No, it's not. Because <laughs> some guys have a frame that can do good in the open, and there's not that many of them that can do that well in the open because their frame's not my frame. I'm bigger than Sean. But I compete, and my frame just doesn't fit in the open. And I'm taller, but I could never put on the weight, no matter you know the what I need to tell you, you know what I need to tell you? Not all humans are created equally, and just because of that doesn't mean we should give them a space to equalize things. Look, not everyone is... Then, then anyway, you can't wait, say what? that in it when the amateurs have fucking classes. If not you everyone. want it like that, then take the classes out of the amateur, because you're promoting no. a fucking weight class as an amateur and then saying, when you're Make a pro, now you don't get a weight class. Then take the fucking weight class... Out of the amateur, that's the only argument that makes sense. Is there two? Is there two twelve class? Is there two twelve class in the amateur? Is there two twelve class in the amateurs? Is there two twelve class in the amateurs? There, there's a one ninety eight, which is and the two two. It was two hundred two. Guys, okay, take it down and there's not a two twelve. So, so what I'm not, saying is, if if you're the only way your argument would make fucking no, validity really you're saying, was if you're there was no is, weight classes in the amateurs. No, it doesn't matter yes. for the amateurs. It doesn't matter at all for the amateurs. That can be your feeder system into the pros. And I just like in figure or no, any so of you're classes, say here, here's 10 classes. Wait, wait, wait. Now wait, you get wait. to the pro, you got one. Guy, wait. Ian, wait. Yes. Wait, wait. So listen, <laughs> let's say I agree with you. Let's say the, amateur, the business would fail. The business model would be done. just one second. Except let's, bodybuilding was alive for 50 years before the introduction of the 212. So no, it wouldn't. Let's say, let's say the feeder system thing you were talking about works, right? Sure. There's one. And, and this is a small caveat, but there are a lot of guys that use that pro card as business, right? And a lot of those two hey, wait, 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 hear me out. I just need to say out. something quick. I need to say something quick before you got, you guys are giving reasons to give people handicaps. That's really what you're saying. And guy is saying, I, no matter how much I did, I couldn't be. Yeah. No matter how much I train, I'm not going to be as big as Rami or as fast as Usain Bolt, or I could train my hardest. I'm running every day. I'm going to be Usain. He's still faster than me. It doesn't fucking matter. What is Human, look, Chris Bumstead is just better than people. It's like, you could train as hard as you want. You could do as much as drugs as you hey, like. No wait, one's going to look like Ian, you're going on. Not. You're not letting nobody talk. Yeah, well, no, listen, I just let the guy yell. But yeah, but we can use your same. <laughs> arc, we, we can use your same. I you yell back, guys. I can see. I can see guys. where, like, I can see Ian's perspective though, because like it seems like he's a purist when it comes to bodybuilding. And the but, like, no, but you want, but, yeah, but you want the best to rise above, no well, matter I, I what. When you're talking about professional sports, yeah, in any no, regard, I, get it. I think you should really have it be the cream of the crop. And if, yeah, I get it. And, and you're really trying to bullshit. weed people in. It's a bullshit argument. No, it's yeah, the, but the thing really is, the yeah, but I can, can, you know what? Because I can tell you this. You know what? I'll tell you this. Let's take the 90s, right? Everyone's like, 90s, best physiques on earth. You know why we don't have those physiques anymore? It's because half the guys are going to classic. So I can okay. say to you, you know what? I'm a purist too. Fuck classic. Get rid of it. Make Chris sure. compete in the open. And do you think I would disagree with you? No, but it would be horrible for the business. I'm not. I'm not talking about the business perspective. But that's here. the whole point. We're talking about no, getting know, in I, people involved in the sport. Yes, but this is this is the thing. If you're you not, want to reduce, wait, if you wait, want to reduce, wait, 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 if you wait. want to reduce interest in the sport, do it your We're way. We're arguing two different things. We're arguing two different things. I'm not arguing with your point of it being positive for the sport. I conceded and agreed with that from the beginning. Then that's, that's the end not, of argument. That's, wait, the end of that's argument. not the wait. That's not the point. Guy is making. Guy is not saying about it being good for the sport. He's saying. Well, blah, blah, blah. Some guys can't be as big as these guys. And no fucking shit. No, some guys won't be as good as Derek. Some Agreed. guys won't be as tall as Yao Ming. Agreed. I mean, it's, it's just the fucking reality of 
he, people aren't all created equally. And just because they aren't doesn't okay. mean that we should fill the gaps. Okay. Be like, let's, let's have, wait, let's have an eight foot net league in the, in the NBA. Wait a minute. Wait. Sub six foot. Wait a minute. Not, now you're comparing guy, athleticism to bodybuilding. It's not the same fucking thing. Guy, wait a minute. That's 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 Ian, no Ian, <laughs> Ian, we've already done this across the board. The reason men's physique was created for the guys that didn't want to be monsters. I, I the don't reason, disagree with this The point. reason class – okay, then we're all in agreement then. Guy no, no saying, I'm, just, I'm just saying from a – and like Mike said, from a bodybuilding purist standpoint, I think what makes would make the most sense in creating the best bodybuilding class all combined yeah. is not having bodybuilding separate. I don't, I don't think we should have classic then either if we're going to go that far. I would agree because with I you. Think, I think if Chris – I think if Chris was forced to do open, we would yeah. have – we would have, we may have the greatest bodybuilder we've ever seen on earth. I, I'm not going to disagree with you okay. even for one second on that. Then that's sentiment. then that's the argument. That's the argument's yeah. over then. Because if we're saying yeah. that we're just looking for where is the best, how can we create the greatest bodybuilder ever? Get rid yeah. of all all the classes and just have uh, open yeah, bodybuilders. I, I'll agree with that, but you'll have 50 bodybuilders total, and none of no, 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 you won't, no, you won't. You'll have no, 200 no. open bodybuilders, but only, but only 20. Was 50 guys competing before the uh, the yeah. genesis of the 202 and the 212. There wasn't. The, no, some no, of the amateur saying, shows, saying, the amateur shows in Canada before the, the 212 or 202 had way more guys than so they do Ian, now. So, Ian, where we all agree, I think, is if we shrunk the offering to just open bodybuilding, we would have a Brandon Hendricks with massive legs maybe competing. We would have a yes. Chris Bumstead maybe competing. I yeah. think we, we all agree that if you increase the pool of people into one – category that category is going to be the depth of it the, the, the depth the, the depth of it is going to be better but by the but if we're talking about bringing the maximum amount of people into fitness and bodybuilding and i don't disagree with you at this all. is why they've separated it all sure so then we all okay. agree so we all agree on everything no no uh, yes but all i'm uh, the only point i was saying is that the 212 is really the only class that is the same as another class no that's not really true because <laughs> classic is the same as bodybuilding i'm sorry you don't have the same poses you wear different okay. trunks you wear okay. we all go to the, the gym do the, we all have to do cardio do we all the, the same no 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 the minute the differences ah. the differences between classic and bodybuilding i'm sorry for anybody the criteria is judged differently because they're forcing a new category but yes. to be on but to be honest they still have the most shredded guy the guy with the best lines, and usually the most muscular guy wins. It's bodybuilding for nicer physiques. Well, it is, it is, and it isn't because even if let's say Sean Clarita could make his way in, he might not necessarily win the classic Olympic. Yeah, but that's you know? because they're judging classic properly. They're yes. they're, they're including shape that's, as part of is, the this is the point of what I'm saying is that the judging for 212 and open are identical. No, I know, but if we were going back to the purist argument, yeah. the way they're judging classic is the way they should be judging bodybuilding, period. Sure. Okay. Yeah. So it would like the the purest argument is something we all agree on, but it doesn't yeah. make yeah. sense as, as lifting the whole sport. Up. Find the best of anything. Think about this. Wait. 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 Sense. Wait. Yes. Wait. Think about this. If we took the purest argument, right? Chris would not be as popular he is, as he is, and there would not be millions of guys running around with fucking mustaches. Sure. Okay. So creating that class alone but, but there might have been someone else to fill that void like we don't know what we don't know like yeah, yeah no, but but i'm just using as right same thing take a sean clarita right yeah. how many five foot 160 pound guys are going oh, hell, well maybe i could do that like it's yeah. important it's important to create these things for the entire sport to get more people involved and and this is where i i do agree but i think that can be done within the amateur ranks not the pro ranks I don't think so because putting people I on think a you pro leave stage, the pro ranks, you, you leave the pro ranks, you leave like at like the NBA or the NFL where it's like you no. either fucking nut up or shut up. And it's like you get with the pro. No, Ian, the no because not, not, no, that's not true. Because if you eliminated classic and you eliminated 212, not everybody wants to be a 260 pound fucking monster. That's why classic is so popular now. Okay, sure. And th but that, that's where my argument comes of the guys in 212 do want to be 260 pound monsters. But they can't be, so they're like they exactly. Be. That's it. They can't yeah. be. You're right. I got. I, 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 I said. I. I flat I out said. Gen, it's. It. We're gen, like some people genetically don't have the structure. I fucking said it ten minutes ago. You're so funny. But that's I, that's not a reason. <laughs> but that's not a reason to create a new class. That I understand the argument when you're saying. But, for I, I, yeah, but blah, blah, I'm blah, saying blah, this. 100%. When you start when you when in or if the pro class is here and the amateur ranks is here and the amateur ranks is perceived to have class classes you can't then have a pro pro rank and be like fuck all, all the classes 
Enjoy. Why? In, well, you can. In all the women. Yeah. In all, you, in could, all, you could. You could. You could. But I don't every, think the business would, would survive in too every long. Sing, in every single women's division, it is that way. Every single class. Figure <laughs> has heights and amateurs. None in the in the pros. Bikini, heights, none. Women's bodybuilding has weight classes. They have absolutely no division in the pros. Yeah, but unfortunately, unfortunately, I can't change the height of my heels to match everybody else's no, height. But, but that's that's irrelevant. I'm just saying. That's his women's... point, guy. Guy. Yes. If you're not you're not understanding what he's saying. He's yeah. basically in, saying if you can't get to a certain size, if you can't get to a certain shape, you're shit out of luck. I, I can't run out. a nine point seven five. And just meter, have an open I'm class in the amateurs and call it a day. No. Then have an open class in the amateurs and call it a day. No, that doesn't make sense either because you no. still have to give people a chance to get there. But that's why yes. I think. This, but that's why I think the two twelve is helpful because it still gives. Okay. I okay, this is, saying, but this I is think the, that could be achieved in the in the in the amateur class. I I don't. Let me tell you why. When a guy who's uh, five feet tall, 180 pounds, goes, oh, I could get on the Arnold stage or I could get on the Olympia stage, it makes them actually want to be a pro. Like soon, you know what I mean? He's not going to stay as a fucking amateur until he gets to 250. He's going to be like, you know what? I only got to, I can win the nationals and I could be on the Olympia stage one day. Like that's a, it's a reasonable expectation. Whereas if he turns pro as a fucking middleweight, or if you don't let him turn pro, he's like, why am I going to do this? I'm not going to turn pro till I'm 230 pounds and I weigh 160 right now. Fuck it. I'm not doing it. Right. I, so, I don't necessarily agree because you're still going to have Uber athletes like the Sean Clarita's that are yeah, going to be at a massive, wait, 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 but you're shrinking. wait, you're better, wait, that are going to be at a massive discrepancy that these guys coming up will see and be inspired by. So I think if you're a 155 pound guy competing in the middleweights or welterweights or whatever the fuck it is, and you see Sean at 175 pounds dusting 300 pound monsters, you're like, I can do this. But too. that goes to my argument is would Sean have gotten to where he is had he not had the pro stage to stand on and prove himself? I think he, I think any of those guys that are at the top of the Olympia would have end, ended up exactly where they are. It just would have been a, a different process getting. There. I, think I, I don't agree. Sadly mistaken. I don't agree with that. I think somebody like Sean has gained a lot of fucking mass, and along the way, he's been able to beat people that have kept that motivation high. And how many guys have you said what you just said? A hundred and seventy five, one hundred and seventy five pound monster standing on the open Olympia, like. Sean Sean was a 175 pound monster that won a pro show. Name another guy that's done that. Yeah, at that weight, sure, not many, but I'm saying when you're talking because or also, that height, that's my point. Yeah, and, and know why? Because they stayed in the 212 because they had that option, you know. So you're like, saying, okay, fine. So let's expand it. So you're saying somebody like Keon. Yep. Somebody like Keon is there's no 212 anymore. He's just got to keep growing till he gets to Yeah, I think wait, I have to say that I think the judging criteria would have to be slightly altered, you know, to to have the for the variance and heights and structure sizes a little bit, but I think that you could absolutely do it. And I think when you have guys like Lee Priest competing against fucking, you know, Nasser El Simbadi, I think it proves that this is possible. I mean, you know, I think it's it's happening right now with all these guys. Literally, first and second place at the Olympia were two twelve guys. Okay, let I me mean, ask I, you this. Let me ask you this: When Lee Priest was sixth place or whatever, top five at the Olympias, yeah. how many guys in his stature were competing in bodybuilding? A lot. I mean, fucking whatever. Wait, Ooh. who's the guy that Three won the five four? But didn't fucking Momo Benaziz win at like 185 pounds? He won the Olympia. You're, you're talking about one offs here. I'm saying how many guys? Just uh, hear me. Don't get mad. Just answer my question. Well, how I don't many... know. Pull up, pull up every single active bodybuilder from 1999 to 2008, and I'll tell you. What, what I'm saying is, no matter how many you find, it's not going to be the amount of people that right. we see in the 212. So yeah. we are in agreement again that the business yeah, model makes sense. But we're but you're you're not seeing my point that in a purest sense, I would like to see Chris Bumstead in the open. And the so fact that I. we fucking right, I would. Okay, so we're in agreement again. So yeah. in a pure in purest context, we're saying get rid of all the classes except open. But in a business sense, we make we're also agreeing that having the classes brings everybody up. Yes. I I, I yes, okay, okay. sure. Yeah, because so, I think when when you what eliminate... are we arguing about then? Nothing. When you eliminate the variance, <laughs> you're going to get more cream rising to the top for sure. When you separate more, you're going to get less of that. You know? No, I think you still no, get the cream rise to the top. Yeah, you're, you're just, they just you're rise just to the top of different divisions. classes, in, di divisions, sorry, yes. right? yeah. in different divisions. Yeah, you still get Sean at the top of the two twelve. So Chris at the top apart. of the classic. Yeah. Spread yeah. Apart. If, you take, if you force every, if you take no matter what it is, if you're comparing and and force them into like okay. The best, it, there's no classes, the best wins. Like, you're always going to find the best doing it the way Ian's talking about. That's 100%. I agree with Ian. I, but in bodybuilding, I just don't think 
that is the correct way to do it. And I'm not saying finding the best open bodybuilder in the world, the way Ian's way is right, but that we want to find the best athletes for the classes. No, That's the well, so you I, want to find the so you want to find the best bodybuilder that is 212 pounds or under. Like <laughs> what a fucking arbitrary no, number. Ian's, like, Ian's cares, right about you know? Ian's right about this. When you look at the 90s, for example, who cares? Just one second. Just one second. Millions of fans yeah. that watch the 212. That's who cares. Yeah, just no, one they second. Don't, they don't care about them because they're 212. They care about them because they're good bodybuilders. And those guys, the flex- yes, would they be? Would, would those 212 bodybuilders really be that good if there was open? And the answer is some of them, yes. A lot of them, no. But, but all we care no, about. No, that's true. Ian. Guy, guy, you know, guy, all the 212 wait. guys now and throw them in the open. They'd be a lot of them would be forgotten about, and no, they wouldn't. They, they'd be nobodies. Guy, and? he doesn't care. He doesn't care about that. And what's wrong with that? What he's saying is, and this is the kind of the point to the argument. If you look back at the '90s, the reason that the bodybuilders are so good is because there wasn't anything except bodybuilding and exactly. fucking fitness. Everybody had to do fucking open. There was no men's yes. physique. There was no. I, classic, you, so so, no so you don't think you don't think the two two thousands was good? The '90s is always seen as the golden era of bodybuilding, in in the way the shape of physiques and the way they look. That's I'm just that's all I'm saying. And I'm saying if you agree with that. And even in the early 2000s, there was no fucking men's physique or classic or anything. It wasn't until the late, the mid to late 2000s, the early two, sorry, the mate. Oh, no, no, listen, 2005 listen, listen, and I, up. I'm just not one of these guys that sit here and, and, and think the 90s was the best ever. I'm not, I'm not saying that. I'm saying amongst like the common theme in bodybuilding is the 90s of the golden era. And what I'm saying is if you think that's true, part of the reason could be is there was no other classes. The Brandon Hedr- Hendrickson's or whatever. The We're fucking the, the Chris Bumsteads, the fucking Sean Claritas, they're all in open. Yeah, and, and look at and look at the variances you'd have in weights, man. You'd have guys like Flex Wheeler coming second to the Olympia, 225 pounds. You'd have fucking Nasser and Dorian, like 250 plus. You'd have Sean or uh, fucking Sean Ray and Lee Priest, like 215 or less. Like you had such crazy variances, and these guys could still all compete together and be competitive against one another. It wasn't like Sean Ray who looked just as good as another guy was placing 10 places lower because he was smaller. Like that's, 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 ac- that's actually true. It, I mean, if you looked at the top five from some of those years, you, you have like all different physiques. You had like yeah. Sean Ray and Lee priest. And you have like I Flex, mean, Wheeler. Flex, Flex Wheeler could have been competing in fucking classic, you know, <laughs> but I think, I think good... it's like Ian said, I think it's like Ian says though, like you'd have to, you'd have to tweak the judging criteria to make it yeah. like a true, a well, true judge of the physique, regardless yes. of density, like muscle yes. mass. Like you have to yeah. bring back this almost classic influence yeah. and apply it to these bigger guys, right? And you have to wonder you would, if you would honestly be different. judging it very similar to like you're judging today's classic. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. Or we're just gonna have to abandon all that and it's just gonna have to be an overall winner at the Olympia between classic two twelve. That, <laughs> I think that, that is best case scenario. I see <laughs> now, like okay, see now, now. Oh, I would agree. That was just best <laughs> bodybuilder, period. I would agree that period. I would agree with. But getting rid of the classes, I think, is insanity. Well, now I, what I, happens? I understand what happens both this? sides of the argument. Now what you happens? Have to, you have to have a special judging criteria yeah. for that overall comparison, where you yeah. can yeah. test that theory out. You know what I mean? We've so been it can't saying just be like open looking, open judging you know, versus two twelve versus classic. Oh, wait, wait, I have one question. Though. What if Hadi stayed in the two twelve? And then wins the overall Olympia every single year against the men's open guy. Do we still have a case for keeping the open or for keeping two twelve? Not really, you know. If you're talking about no. Ian again, if you're talking about just bringing people into the sport, yes, yes, yes. I'm not. I'm not disputing. Yeah, that yeah, 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 yeah. So uh, it's funny you said that, Mike, because we've been talking about that for like two fucking years. I don't know why the Olympia hasn't figured this out yet. It's such the a only, simple thing. Just even the if, only reason, even if, it was, like, even if it was just like a, it's like say it's not like. How they're giving like the fans choice or the whatever it is, right? Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. like have that even even if you had it more interactive where the fans got to speak about it. It's like talk that. you we have instant instantaneous judging between like these are your three guys who won. Like yeah, they all won. They all keep their titles. They don't. It's yeah. not like there's one winner. It's just like yeah. who is like the fans' choice or the fucking. Well, then Chris Chris Bumstead will choice. win every year by ten thousand points. Oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> but that's also <laughs> telling you. That's also telling you. Billion like, votes like, to seventy five. Yeah, but that's also telling you something that that's like where we're trending to, right? So we're not yeah. you're not discrediting the guys, but like the understanding that that's where the the sport is headed in terms oh, of people's minds who are coming to it. They're like, we think Chris Bumstead is what yeah. you should look like, yeah, and not. I gotta, I gotta ask you guys if you did in overall this year and you put Sean, Chris, Chris, Chris 
Chris. and Audi, I think Chris wins. Chris, I <laughs> yeah. absolutely. You know what? I got to show this. That back that sh backstage shot is crazy, eh? Listen, Ian. Back of remember, side. remember you were talking about that backstage shot you showed me. Yeah, it doesn't this compare. light backstage man looked so fucking sick? Yeah, but it doesn't compare <laughs> to this one that he just. It's posted. the same light. It's the same light. No, no, no. I know it's the same light, but just this fucking. This is the post. light. You know what I was telling you? I saw Andrew backstage yeah, in this yeah, blue light, yeah, and I almost yeah, pooped myself. Yeah. This is the spot <laughs> where Chris is. Look at this, this blue area where the tanning was. It's fucking insane. Guys, look at this, <laughs> how he just opens up here. Look at that. It's like he comes from nothing. It's like he looks like like kind of a small guy. And then all of a sudden he starts fucking posing. And you're like, what the fuck? Look at that. Like this it's looks. Like that, this... It's like that's what should happen in bodybuilding, though, in my eyes. Like you should, yeah. the pose should I'm alive. almost erupt. Yeah. Like the physique yeah. erupts. When Can you I tell shot. you, like if we're talking about purist. This is like a modern day Dorian Yates. If he was forced, if, if he was forced to go into open, because look, great shoulders, <laughs> smaller arms, huge fucking flaring lats from the front. Good. Yeah, this but is, I mean, the back is obviously different. I mean, Chris's strength is not his back, back, but I understand what you're saying. In the cobra kind of shape in that front lat, yeah. <laughs> it's just like if you had forced him to go into open, how many Olympias is he winning? Like, this is a crazy physique. Yeah, I mean, it, 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 that's that's the fun part of this discussion because, I mean, maybe he wouldn't get any bigger than this and it, it wouldn't look the same in an open lineup or maybe he would win looking like this because the judging criteria would be different. I mean, it's hard to say, you know? <laughs> is it? Like, I don't know because I don't, I don't know you and I don't know Chris, but, like, is there something that, aside from, like, obviously the massive popularity and, like, being the best in your division, is there something holding him back from moving that move or is it just, like... Like, what is I it? I honestly just, don't I'm asking. I don't know. Yeah, no, I think he just found his place in Classic. I mean, he literally turned pro the same mm -hmm. year that Classic was invented. Um, and I think he just thought it fit his look. Um, and I, I don't think he had a ton of interest in being, like, a giant guy. And, like, it's also, like, I don't think Chris would be I, – I think he tried – like, when he was trying to body when he said it himself in an interview, it's like, it's not like he's not trying to grow, you know? Like, mm -hmm. he's not as much now, but – he still has tried to grow and he didn't end up being like 290, you know, <laughs> but yeah. if you'd done that over years, maybe he would have, but maybe the physique wouldn't look the same. I, I don't really know. You know, that looks no, crazy. I think, I think sticking to classic was the best thing he ever did in this capacity. When we're talking about bringing people to the sport, you know, <laughs> I'm, so, I'm sorry, guys, this honestly, like, I'm not to, trying to be a fucking dick rider or nothing, but like that has to be one of the nicest physiques I've seen 100%. Like, ever period e ever. Yeah. yeah ever. Like, <laughs> They're obviously it's funny because sometimes when you see a physique that has weaknesses, you're like your eyes are drawn to the weaknesses and you're drawn away from his. Yeah, it's like Chris has weaknesses, but he has a way of like disguising them so you don't even fucking look at them. No, it's because his strengths are so strong that they, they just power. They, like yeah. his lap flare, his waist size, like how everything sh kind of flows together, his height, like everything just makes you like stare at as at, as a whole and not mm. as an individual part. Like if we're it's talking. Like his body is literally a sum of all parts. It's not like an individual yeah. thing. Like if like you it, look at it, his quads aren't that great or that big. His hamstrings aren't that big or no, that no, great. No, no, it's everything. It's, yeah. It's everything together. The only thing that is like superior is his waistline or his lat flare from the front, you know? The, yeah. If you had to pick top five bodybuilders of all time, for me, <laughs> Chris is in there. Even I mean, though he's Even though he's not as big as some of the other guys I would mention, I can't recall a yeah. physique that's that well put together. It's, I mean, it, you make it hard to, it's, it's hard to not put him in there for sure. I mean, Mike, Mike would, especially Mike, when Mike. you combine it with everything he's done for that division and the sport and like how big he's grown, you know, put all yeah. that, put all that aside physically, no, but I'm saying physically a only. Lot of, the reason of his, his, he is so popular in a lot of ways is because of his physique and because of the draw towards it. I understand. Mm -hmm. But I, I, aside from if you're with your bodybuilding eye, Mike, and what, and what you prefer whether it's mass monsters or not, would he be in your top five favorite physiques of all time? Not subjectively, like for people, your personal top five. No, I mean, I the shape and the size and everything. I think his physique is like godlike in a sense, but it's like I'm, I'm kind of like Ian, in the sense that like I err, I err to the side of mass more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like yeah. my preference is mass. So yeah. I'm a fucking big dude. I like big fucking dudes. Like yep, yep. Ronnie's my number one always. It's just yep. never gonna be anyone better. 
Yep. And like, I'm not even the biggest fan. I'm not even the biggest fan of Dorian. I like Dorian, but like, I'm not like super. Yeah. It's just like Ronnie's the pinnacle to me. I was like literally looking at that picture of Chris and I'm like, imagine he was Ronnie's size. And had that <laughs> <laughs> what yeah. the fuck? Who's a, if we could just like superimpose that, like, so I think mentions Ron- of him on, yeah. I was like, fuck, man. Ronnie's like, mine yeah, too. I don't have a, Ronnie's yeah. mine too. I don't know about Guy and Ian, but of course, yeah. <laughs> guy is, is Ronnie your favorite? I, no, I was a big Kevin fan growing up. Be Kevin, Kevin Lee. Yeah, Kevin's in there too, for sure. All right. So who's two, three, four, five for you if you have to name them, Mike? Lavroni's in there. I like Fleck. Uh, it's odd, but I, I liked Phil Heath's physique at a certain point. I love Phil like, like, I loved it at like, I loved it at like that one. I forget what that. I think it was the 2011. Arnold. 2011. Yeah, yeah, like that fucking 2011 Arnold. And that oh, fucking those black sh- and white shots. I I'm think it was sh- the. I forget what shot it was. I'm going to show you. It's the 2010 Arnold, not 11. It's 20. Yeah, it's around those, somewhere around there. No, it's 2010. 2011 Iron Man. Go to 2010 like Arnold. This fucking that black yeah. and white photo down there. That, and even the just standing there looking at the camera. Like, that's stupid, man. Yeah. The That's funny thing is, like, this isn't even fucking morphed. Most of these photos no. you find are more are morphed. More. Right, no. <laughs> look, at, look at the back shot to the left of it. That's the Iron Man, I think, right? Yeah. yeah. Those Iron Man shots in black and white that they showed, yeah. they're like an MD or something, were fucking... I looked at those pictures and I was like, wow, I'm never going to be a bodybuilder. <laughs> look at that back double, back double second from the right at the bottom. This yeah, one. like, yeah. what yeah. the fuck is that, you know? Yeah. You know, we talk about conditioning, like, this is fucking conditioning. Yeah. This is just wild. Like grainy, thin skin, not a fucking ounce of anything anywhere. It's just odd too that more people don't is... more people don't place him, don't put them in their top. You know what I mean? Like he's second for he's, serious... sec- he's second for me. He's, he's second for me. <laughs> What's that? He's just like he's sick. He's sick, being my top five. He's second. He's to me, I think Phil's the second best bodybuilder yeah. ever. I, I go I go Ronnie than Phil. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I don't even have Clarita in my top five, to be honest. I love Clarita's physique. I think, I think for even me, even though he's, I think he's going to end up being something that's like talked about yeah. for a long time when this is over, just because of like the story that was like David and Goliath oh, wow. type thing. Like, this, you know what I mean? Like, it's crazy, man. I think, and like um, to see him like at the level I saw him when when I was with Animal, and I saw him when he was an amateur, and like to visually see that transformation of a like you're another person, man. Yeah. It's not you. You're a yeah. little child. Yeah. And now you're this fucking thing. That, like, yeah. you look like a fucking like Marvel superhero. Like, yeah, that's and that's the awesome thing about Sean is when you see Sean in person in clothes, you still really don't think a ton about it. Yeah. And then he takes no. the clothes, it clothes off, and you're like, "What in the fuck is that?" Fuck is that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's crazy, man. Um, one second, I just want to show you guys this. This is. I said, "What in the fuck is that?" Too, when I first saw you when you won your pro card. Me? Ian. Oh yeah. yeah. Look at that. I remember I was, we were in Montreal oh, for crazy. the Nationals, and I fucking was with uh, Jerome. And I didn't even know that they had that. He was an Olympia amateur, you won, right? So we yeah. did a pro card. Yeah. And I saw the picture. I didn't know what that was. I didn't know that was a show. And Jerome showed me the picture. I'm like, who the fuck's that guy? I was like, what the fuck is that? There's me and Chris. I, I, looked at, I looked at Jerome, and I'm like, be happy that that guy got his pro card there. That's, that's your first show, Ian. One. Look how small I was there. That's your first show. That's the one I did. Yeah, that's my pro debut. Your glutes look the same. Yeah. Uh, but go down, I'll see my, my amateur. No, no, on the main page, not there. What's this? Uh, that's the show I turn pro at. Yeah. Yeah. Tell, tell you look young, young there. I, I carved up on buffet food at a Mexican fucking. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Watch, watch this. Watch this. Look at the transformation. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, this show, that show in Spain had the most fucking mog lighting. Look like, at look at this fucking, lighting. Look at your face. Look. It's like That's not good, even edited. That's not even it. edited. That's just it's how like, the photo. It's like a good looking kid, like could be on a cover somewhere. And he's like, fuck. Yo. <laughs> <laughs> Juggernaut. There's, yeah. there's amateur too. That, yeah, that's my, yeah. the show I turn pro at. Look oh, you at, look good, bro. Look how handsome. Look at this. I had no no tan on my face apparently. I know I noticed. That. <laughs> you forgot the oil on your body too. <laughs> Man, it, you know how hard it was to try and figure this shit out in Mexico. Fuck. <laughs> oh fuck, Ian! What a ride, eh? Look how much bigger you are now. 
you had, yeah, nerve, was... you had nerve damage back then too. I know. <laughs> There's the Arnold with why, me. Why, look at why would you post this? Look, you don't like my boot and big booty beat. Why? why? <laughs> <laughs> this isn't like your glutes aren't striated. Why is your hip okay. underwear up your ass? I'm not. I'm not. Take I'm not I'm taking the pictures <laughs> from my explain coach. Explain pictures from. <laughs> I'm explain taking the pictures shit, from man. my coach. They happen to just end up on social media, but they I want them to see my glute condition. You know, <laughs> Mike. I don't know if you know this from the from the podcast, but me and Ian have a debate about his glute shots all the time. To fucking <laughs> yeah, it's like an on, ongoing joke. Ian keeps posting ass shots, and everybody keeps ta- everybody when keeps I, when tagging do, me. I, when I go to do like my progress photos and my boxers, I literally like instinctively just like pull them up my butt. You know, you're like, you're like gonna like this. <laughs> I just like it, I don't even think about it. It's just like how I go take my progress card. Like where are my boxers? I roll them up and pull them up my ass. You know, <laughs> it's just like that's my that's my posing trunks right that's there. You disgust, know, that's disgusting. All right, guy, are you gonna? Is this your picks? Yeah. Okay. I'm leaving for I'm leaving for Dubai in the morning, eh? Yeah. That's awesome. I don't want to go. Do you guys ever plan trips somewhere and then you're like, you don't want to go? Every all time. The time. All the time. Really? Okay, I thought it was the Every only one. Every fucking trip. Time. My <laughs> wife is like, I'm so excited to go. I'm like, ah, fuck. I'm like, I just got so much to do here. We're going to have to podcast. I'm going to have to podcast from my laptop with no headphones, no microphone, no nothing. I'm going to be like, I'm gonna be like one of you guys. Like all of us. Yes. Yeah. I think it's going to be unprofessional, but we're going to got a lot go. of packing to do, buddy. No, it's you know what's <laughs> good about packing when you're not competing? I don't have to pack a fucking whole bag of food. Yeah. So, I don't have to pack all my supplements, all my fucking. You know I what won't I mean? miss that. Yeah, man. Like I remember, I used to travel. I used to pack a, an entire suitcase that just had frozen vacuum sealed food in it. Yep. So does it? Do you ever? Do you ever get anxiety like post retirement about getting your meals in or no? No, dude. Do you, Mike? No. no. I honestly, I've had one meal today. I swear to God. One yeah, meal. like if if you went a day and just ate like one fucking meal and then ate like fucking garbage before bed, you'd be fine with it, eh? Ian, every day for like a month. <laughs> Like, every day for like, like a month was like i would wake up and i'd have like a, cr- a clean pre-workout meal like, like i don't know whatever egg whites and like oatmeal or something and then i would work out and then i wouldn't eat for like six hours and then i'd be like i'm having a pizza i'd smash a pizza and go to bed gotta get those calories in man I'd be like oh, i didn't eat all day I better eat a large pizza this is what i, saw, I, I started doing because i it was getting to the point where it was bothering me. Monday, I'd be my my normal like like schedule. Tuesday, normal schedule. Wednesday, normal schedule. Thursday would be my day off, and I would literally not eat all day, and then just eat one meal. Yeah, and and then Friday would happen, and I would fall into just not wanting to eat. Yeah, but I would promise I still go to gym. So now I'm like I can't, dude. I woke up. <laughs> I was. One, I was. <laughs> what one are you time. doing, Ian? What? Are you smoking a joint? <laughs> No, no, man. <laughs> you guys keep going. I go to take a piss. Go ahead, guys. Sorry. I said so. I w- I woke up the past three days. I was one ninety eight, one ninety six, then one ninety four. Like because you're not eating. <laughs> See, that doesn't happen to me. So, but now I put like, all this thing. Even when I eat the the other uh, was it Sunday where there was football over all that food I was cooking. Yeah, I ate that whole night. Woke up. I was a pound and a half light. I'm like. That doesn't happen to me either. Sucks. I wake up. I wake up heavy the next day. No, I'm pretty fucking lean right now because I'm totally <laughs> Yeah, I gotta. I'm gonna be the guy at the beach that wears his t-shirt in the water. <laughs> I'm gonna be the guy with the camera from the sand. I burn, I burn easy. I burn easy. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't want to burn. I gotta wear my t-shirt at all times. Oh, sen- <laughs> sensitive skin, man. <laughs> oh, melanoma. That's fucking. You're not gonna see no pictures from this fucking. Any pictures you see from this trip are just going to be from here up. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> you got to let me know how that goes. I'm very interested. Well, they're bringing in a special. I'm actually really interested too, to be honest with you, because they're bringing in a, a specialist to do the kidney stem cell because it's a separate doctor. Like Dr. Khan does a stem cell. I guess that's intravenous and on injuries and stuff. But then there's a special kidney doctor that comes in to do the stem cells for the kidney. Got to talk about that. So I'm like, dude, can I, can I just tell you if this works? Like if I start getting my blood work done, like two, three, four, five months down the road and my kidney levels are getting better. Masters Olympia. No, I don't give a fuck about that. I'm just saying, (laughs) no, no, this is like huge for the bodybuilding world though. Cause like diabetes and kidney health are probably the two most 
things that are most affected with body the two things that i'm not worried about at all <laughs> well, yeah. two things i have zero worry about yeah, either you're, you're too small to worry i was about. gonna say you're too <laughs> small guy it's the 212 <laughs> saved you if you'd have to push to be a real real bodybuilder yeah, yeah, you wouldn't even know if it wasn't for the two you wouldn't even know if it wasn't for the 212 but you selfish son of a bitch yeah guy well, yeah, yeah you, keep, tough, you know you keep shitting on fucking guys class friends. <laughs> Ian has no no heart. Uh, okay, let's do one question, and then we'll go. Uh, what's the most money Mike, you guys had? Hurt real quick, what had to hurt? Mike's fucking W on his head. I, every time he does this, like we got it, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> Had you, hurt. If, if you, if, not, like, if you, there's not much sensation up there, so it didn't hurt too bad. I, I was gonna say, I don't know if you have hair that grows in yet, or but like if you grow, will it grow through the tattoo? Yeah, yeah, but I don't like. You, like I'm missing this general area. So yeah, but let's say, let's say you had a full head of hair completely. Yeah. You yeah, could grow yeah. hair. You could just hide that, and it would just be under your hair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. of course. Like the tattoo oh, on my. Yeah. Like the tattoo on my back when my hair grows in, it grows over. The <laughs> oh, <Mine too. laughs> ah, wait a minute. Speaking of this, I'm going to get my fucking hair done. I just found out something. So very, very I, good. we were joking around the last podcast about getting my fucking hair done yeah. with, with my ass hair. And, <laughs> that, <laughs> and we we're obviously joking around, but some guy messaged me. I can't remember his name now. It's in my DMS. And he said <clears> they <throat> used his beard hair. Yeah. And it actually looks fucking good. Yeah, you can do it with beard hair, hundred percent. Well, fucking, I'm gonna grow. And this you shit have out. you have beard hair for seven heads of hair. Yeah, I'm just gonna flip it. It's gonna just. No, you're off. just gonna take <laughs> you're gonna take the bit that grows from your eye to here. I have enough eye hair right here. Yeah. <laughs> the bit that he's shaving between the top I, of the so I honestly head. thought you were going a different direction. And no, I, was I'm not, I know you thought I was gonna go to my asshole hair, but no. Oh, I'm God. I said that to Paul. I said, I'm gonna get my ass hair put on my head. He's like, your head's gonna stink all the time. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, the hair doesn't the hair come out of your ass, ass stinking. stinking. <laughs> the ass makes the hair stink, not the, the hair no, making the ass Paul stink. thinks it's the hair on the ass. That stinks. Yeah. Yeah. Why is he so dumb? He's just... <laughs> Why is he so dumb? You know what's funny? I know I tell Paul sometimes. I'm like, you are the dumbest smart person I know. He's yeah. actually, dude, he's so well fucking read. It's insane. He knows everything about politics. You know what I said to my you buddy the other day? I go, you're, you're like one of the smartest people I know. I go, you're 99% smarter than everybody i know but the one percent yeah it's like so you, evident it's just, i'm like it's so fucking out there bro that it makes you fucking sound like an idiot but it's not even it's not even dumb it's just i can't even explain it like when he says things Black like Sha- when he yeah. says things like shack it i'm like what the fuck like it's just different hyperball yeah hyper yeah hyperbole he said hyperball we say <laughs> normal people say hyperbole. Paul says Isn't hyperbole. autophagy too. Yeah, autophagy. 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 Paul says autophagy. <laughs> Fuck, we were laughing our asses off. Um, all right, let's do one. Oh, that was the one. Where where did it go? What's the most money you guys have made from a show? Five grand. Twenty. Ian's won what? Seventy seventy five <laughs> plus a bonus. Yeah, seventy five at the Arnold. Yeah, plus a bonus. Yeah, that season I made like almost, yeah. I made like 150k in prize money. Remember, that year. remember how mad people were at you? He's like, "Why does he keep competing?" <laughs> I just did like fucking four shows, yeah, because I think I won 35 or 30 from the Olympia, plus the 75, then two or three shows that I won 10 at, plus my bonuses, yeah. But I remember how mad? Remember how mad people were though? Yeah, like, so she, he, like he should give other yeah. people a chance to fucking qualify, and he's like, "Fuck you, I'm taking their money." Yeah, I'm making a fucking living. Be better. <laughs> be, be better. Be better. Be better. Be me, and you'll win the money too. <laughs> you're such a you're such an asshole sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, just, you know what? At the beginning, I love that, that about. Mike's I love like, it about you. It's okay. It's like this fucking hand holding generation. That's what we can't let them buy into this shit. You Listen, know? I agree. Be better, but when you're twelve, it's hard. <laughs> <laughs> well, then you just have to take twice as much steroids to compensate for your lack of stature. Okay. <laughs> See, that's that's not fair. <laughs> Well, it's a you can do it. It's a choice. <laughs> uh, with your podcast with Mike Van Wick, you mentioned you dislike logbooks. Why? And how do you <laughs> and how do you remember the last weight you lifted? <laughs> how do you know? <laughs> if I bench three fifteen on a fucking bar, on a, I remember the next week. I can yeah. remember the next week I did three fifteen. It's not that hard. 
Yeah. The problem plus, with the log books is plus, that people get too wrapped up in the log book and they chase that and nothing else. And that's stupid. Look, I think it's a good, I think it's a, a good way to quantify, quantify how strong you are, which is a, an important portion of getting bigger, but there's a lot of other factors and I don't think you're going to get stronger forever. And I, I just, I don't, I just don't think it's necessary. I think it's, I'll put it this way. I'm not with Mike where I think you should burn it, but I'm not with like Justin either, or like, um, uh, uh jp where you think it's like has to be the centerpiece i think it's a good just to have a guide that's kind of yeah. where i'm where i am on it i'll so, agree with that yeah it's like a so, good tool also if it keeps you accountable and it keeps you on a like on a path and you need yeah. that you're that type of person then yeah if, if, you if definitely you, think, you should definitely do that yeah, yeah if it's making if it's helping you use it if you don't think it is don't i mean yeah. you know yeah. i've never i've never really log booked and i've done okay you know i mean like it's we're all doing all right <laughs> I think at the end of the day, you're going to push as hard as you can, regardless of what the fucking logbook says. Yeah, that's yes, that's the that's the the premise in my mind that I don't like. I understand, okay, and if you want to do, I think it's good for like very small increments of progressive overload. Like, okay, I did fucking three plates and a ten this week. I'm going to do three plates a ten and a two and a half. Like, what? Yeah. silly if you want to go in like super small, you know, bits like that. Um, but I mean, fuck, like you're still getting stronger, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's hard to argue with JP though. <laughs> JP has put on a ton of fucking mass, right? But yeah. there's a lot of people that put on a lot of mass that never use a logbook either. So, and the, and the argument can be made: Would JP put on that same mass without a logbook? And we don't really know, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All he right. may, he may not have. I'm not sure. <laughs> okay, boys, I had fun. Thanks hey for coming on. Um, are you guys all on next week? Yep. Yeah, of course. Mike, Mike, are you having a good time? Or are we boring the fuck out of you with our? No, I'm here. I'm good. I'll come back anytime. Ian, before you go, guess his favorite movie. Guess what? What would you say his favorite movie is? Well, I know the answer already, so it's no uh, <laughs> What do you think, guy? No book. No. <laughs> Obviously. I'll give, you, I'll give you two more guesses. Second favorite. <laughs> you know what's when it when he when he said that answer, it didn't surprise me as much. Like if he had said like Step Brothers, I would have been like, that's exactly what I'd expect, to be honest, you know? Like when 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 Jose is like fucking whatever reacts. I'm like come on you know that's what i thought i was like no, sure. I, feel like, I feel like fucking like will ferrell movies and like those kind of movies are like or is gum no his favorite talladega nights, <laughs> talladega nights. Oh, on a minute. this guy's <laughs> ian's dropping like a bunch of will ferrell movies and fucking guys like forrest gump <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. All right, I gotta go. I'll uh, I'll catch you guys next week. Have fun in Dubai. Fly safe, buddy. Okay, guys, yeah, we'll you. talk to you soon. Bye. Bye. Bye.